presentation of the Big East Conference Television Network. Last November's BC Virginia Tech game produced an Eastern style shootout that would make a cowboy proud. A real gunfight. Your best bet, take some cover. Tech coach Frank Beamer's the marshal this time around. He has a posse that's deadly and looking for revenge. Tech's weaponry is up to date and precise, like quarterback Maurice DeShazo, one of the nation's best. He can beat you in so, so many ways. His riding partner is the relentless, punishing, pounding Dwayne Thomas. This time, the Hokies plan on coming out on top here at Chestnut Hill. The BC, they've got a new coach. He's hunted by the Hokies over from the NFL, Dan Henning. And he's got an impressive new rifleman in Mark Hartzell. He had an impressive debut two weeks ago against Michigan, throwing for 338 yards. He's aided by David Green, who Henning calls his best athlete. So stand by. Let's see who'll be left standing as Virginia Tech meets Boston College. Oh, you got me. It's the Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. Today's matchup features the 18th-ranked Hokies of Virginia Tech taking on the Eagles of Boston College. It's hot and humid. It's going to be a great day for football at newly expanded Alumni Stadium. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Sims, and we're pleased to introduce you to the newest member of our Big East family. He's Rick Doc Walker, a member right. of the Hogs of the 82 Super Bowl champion Washington Redskins. Rick, we got a great game for you to start things off. Virginia Tech, a potent offensive ball club. They're 2 0. They move the ball around real well. Well, when you've got a quarterback like Maurice DeShazo, one of the more talented guys, in the country, the numbers will look good. 185 on the ground, 224 in the air. But what sticks out like a sore thumb, fumbles, turnovers, eight turnovers, five, that they lost possession. That kills you. They are led by Maurice DeShazo, number two in passing efficiency last year in the Big East Conference. His numbers to this point. We talked to his coach, Frank Beamer, to get his thoughts on his QB. I think Maurice has an ability to... Uh, uh, cause defense a lot of problems. I, mean, I think when you can read the option the way he does uh, and have the have that threat and then be able to throw the ball and, and be able to throw it fairly well to all parts of the field, uh, I think it causes you a lot of problems. He, I think he puts a lot of stress on the defense. Now, Coach Bieber may be soft-spoken, but that belies the way his defense plays. This is a hard-nosed, take-no-prisoners group led by Kenny Brown and George Del Rico, a couple of good linebackers. Well, two great seniors who really want to go out with a bang. Brown will have a matchup going up against Pete Mitchell and David Green and Del Rico. That ought to be a good one. This is what Tech does so well. They swarm you. They pressure. They put hats on you. The ball pops out, and DeShazo gets another shot at the football. Now, these two linebackers, they're going to go against a sophomore quarterback named Mark Hartzell. All he's doing is taking over for Glenn Foley, who had a fabulous career, which you know about, at Boston College. The numbers a couple of weeks ago against Michigan. Gaudy, the say the least. Oh, boy. It's, you know, a lot of pressure to play quarterback at BC. To go down to Michigan, 106,000 fans, but he made the plays. Here's Dan Henning, the new BC coach on Mark Hartzell. Well, he's got the tools, and he has the temperament. He has some, uh, some native intelligence about this game that he got from his high school coach and the people that he's been around. And he has a, he has a fierce determination about the game. So I think he can be uh, very good. This coach at Brockton High was Armin Colombo, one of the legendary coaches here in Massachusetts. Defensively, BC has a couple of marquee players in Stephen Boyd and Mike Mamula. Yeah, they're going to get after you. Boy, Boyd, Mamula, these guys, they've got a big task going after a guy like DeShazo because you got to keep pressure on him. You got He'll make you miss, so you've got to get after him. A good indication is to stop the run first. Here you watch Boyd with a ride deal, head to head. That's the trademark. See a lot of hard hitting, a lot of points this afternoon at newly expanded Alumni Stadium. This place is going to be jumping, and we're excited to have you with us. We'll be back to kick things off right after these words from our local stations. Welcome back to newly expanded. Alumni Stadium at Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Dave Sims and Doc Walker with you, and we're excited about this game today. Look at these conditions. The temperature, 82 degrees. You can deal with that. It could be tough with the humidity at 85%. The wind out of the southwest and partly cloudy is your forecast. And right now, let's uh, get the debut of Rick Walker's Rolling Rock Chalk Talk. 
Thank you, Dave. Well, the key for the Hokies, number one, eliminate turnovers. They've had five so far, and they put the defense in an awful position. If they do it today, I guarantee you BC will score. Next, you got to put some helmets on Mark Hardshell. you got to find out if this young man can take a hit and keep composure. You also want to get Mitchell out of his game plan early on. And number three, I like to see DeShazo run the football. Get him outside of the pocket. Maybe some option early on. That sounds since chills if you're a defensive coordinator. And then you talk about the Boston College group. Run the football, number one. It does a couple of things. One, you control the clock, and you keep Mr. DeShazo and company off the field. Second, communicate. Boy, I remember back playing against those Buddy Ryan defense, defensive fronts. you got to talk to one another up front. Offensive linemen yelling it down, hoping that the backs get the pickup so that you avoid your quarterback with a blindside hit. And second and third, rather, tackling. you got to get some hats on DeShazo and these guys and bring them down after the first hit. There's Frank Beamer, 48 years old, in his eighth year at Blacksburg, Virginia. An alumnus of Virginia Tech and Dan Henning back on the college campus after 20 years in the pros, 52 years old, born in the Bronx, New York. BC won the toss as we tell you that this is only the second meeting between these schools, thanks to the Big East Conference getting together. There's the officiating crew working today. John Smith will be at the controls with Don Sarah, Tom Stabile, Maurice Sherens, Roger Paramore, John Daniels, and Jeff Triplett. BC won the toss. They deferred, and Virginia Tech will be on offense at first, and Rick, what do you make of BC deferring? <laughs> Well, I always like to get the defense out on the field first. I think you establish a, a, a tone on the football team, and you, you go after DeShazo, and you make him think about this football game, and you get a chance if you get behind. Unfortunately, you don't like to think that way, but if you do, you get the football in the third quarter. There's Brian Still. Got a long return of 33 yards to this point. Jeff Beckley will kick off for Boston College. Cat and mouse with BC starting with a close formation here. BC and Virginia Tech doing likewise, and now they spread out. Virginia Tech was taking no prisoners. They moved their first five guys up. It throws your number count off. Guys are always trying to match up. I got L1, you got R1, and it kind of confuses you early on. We hope we get as good a game as we had last year. We're underway. The Beckley kickoff driving still deep into the end zone. And Virginia Tech will put it in play at its own 20-yard line. A hokey offense led by Maurice DeShazo. Outstanding last year, threw for a record 22 touchdowns. And there's the numbers from last year. Chris Malone, dependable in his 25th straight start, he anchors the offensive line. Dwayne Thomas, he's dependable. And he had a fabulous year last year, the fourth leading rusher in the Big East, number three in scoring. First and 10 at the 20. The wideouts will be Freeman, number 80, and Cornelius White, number four. The running backs, Edmonds and Thomas. They pitch it to Thomas. What a block by Edmonds at the corner, but BC holds. Defensively for the Boston College Eagles, Stalin Collinette, two sacks a couple of weeks ago against Michigan. A fine start for him. And in the secondary, they'll be playing without Joe Camara, who left the ball club, putting a load on Eric Shorter. Eric playing out of the strong safety spot. That last big tackle made by Matt Half and Stephen Boyd. Second down and 10. No gain on that play. DeShazo checking off with Thomas in motion. DeShazo spreading to the corner, throws back. Poorly thrown. No flags. No flags as. There was coverage on the play by Ed Santabria on Dwayne Thomas. Boy, that's about as well as you can cover that. Santabria, excellent coverage. And when, you know, when you stop the run on first down, what it forces you to do now is throw the football. Watch your drops. You got good spacing. You break on the football. That was excellent. Bring up a third and 10 for Virginia Tech. And so far, they're hitting at a 37% clip. And DeShazer wearing the sun shield today. Third down at five. Out right of the eye formation. Third down and 10. We had extra receivers in here. Thomas gets across the 20. About the 22 yard line. And that will bring up a punting situation. Chris Sullivan and Santa Maria. They make the tackle for Boston College. Boyd, Boyd. 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 Boyd
He's got a good base. He gets rid of the blocker and moves in to make the play. Robbie Collick is set to punt. Robbie Senior out of Tazewell, Virginia. And Yada Watson is deep to Boston College. Pressure by Grice. Pretty good kick by Robbie Collick. And Yada Watson has it, drops it at the 49. But he recovers his own miscue. The Eagles put it in play at the 48-yard line, a 30-yard punt, a return of just three yards. No score here at Boston College. We'll be back after these messages. First possession for Mark Hartzell and the BC Eagles. They will put in play at their own 49-yard line. Good to have you back with us here at Alumni Stadium. Dave Sims and Doc Walker. And BC will start with a two tight end look. Gordon Laro in the backfield. Pete Mitchell up on the line. It's Mitchell in motion. In the second back, David Green pushes across the 50-yard line. Waverly Jackson with the tackle. Mark Hartzell, the sophomore out of Brockton, Mass. What a career he had in college and high school. 56% completion to 24 TDs. Pete Kendall anchors the offensive line. Very dependable, the marketing major out of Weymouth, Mass. And Pete Mitchell, the All-American at tight end. Second down and eight for the Eagles. They have three wide acts. Mitchell in motion again. Emmy Brown following him. Hartzell will throw. Now time in the middle. Tip down and tip by number six for Virginia Tech. Hank Coleman, the right defensive end, makes the play. Defensively, Cornell Brown, he's the younger brother of Reuben Brown of Pittsburgh, had three sacks last year and a team-high 24 quarterback pressures. And Torian Gray is a versatile defensive player, is playing at the Roverback spot. He's out of Lakeland, Florida. Third down and eight. Well, just over midfield into Virginia Tech territory, Grayson Watson. For Hartzell. The blitz is on. Hartzell sideline. Picked off before it right to number 21. Brandon Simonis. Simonis got a lot of room. He's to the 40. Trying to pick up some blocks. And Virginia Tech takes over at the 37 yard line. The pressure by Hank Coleman. It results in a pick by Brandon Simonis. Well, this is exactly what Phil Almation wants to get after. Put pressure on the quarterback. You put a hat on him, you, you collapse the pocket. They went maximum pass protection on the strong side, but the weak side broke down. This is just pitch and catch. Defensive guys marvel when they can look that ball and catch it and then get down the field. possibly score. That's exactly what we did. A four-yard return by Simonis. The intended receiver was to get a lot of by number 44, Daryl Porter and Eric Shorter against Dwayne Thomas. But Matt Half played that really well. He bulked up in the offseason, put on about 15 pounds. Twice they tried to run his side.
from his right cornerback spot to make the tackle. Quarter up well. They had no success to the left, so you try it to the right. I like the fact that you run the option early on and not having success with the blast. And I like, look at, you know, they come up, Eagles are swarming well. They force you outside. Second and a third and one. Third and one, two tight end look. Martin and Jennings, 86 and 81 for Virginia Tech. Brian Daniels, first down and more for Virginia Tech. He's down to the 20 yard line. Got some good blocks. Number 77, Mike Bianchin, the junior out of Pittsburgh, springing loose. Bianchin up good at the point of attack. This is the benefit of the option. Once you have the read to the halfback, you can give to the fullback. See, that's just power football. That's what I like about Virginia Tech. So versatile. And those stations who cut away from us for a report on Haiti. We're back live here at Alumni Stadium. Dave Sims and Matt Walker. Virginia Tech after an interception threatening the score here. DeShazo. And DeShazo paid a big price. Intended for Brian Still, Mike Mamula knocked DeShazo's helmet off. <laughs> Mamula, you know it's going to happen sooner or later. He led the Big East in sacks with 11 a year ago, and this one, boy, Jay, hey, good. He just gives up. He flat gets beat at the point of attack, and this is what happens to your quarterback. Not good at all. Mike Mamula carries some pretty good speed. Put on 15 pounds this year, too. He's one of those guys you just love to play with. You know, tenacious. Second down and 10 from the 21. Three tight ends now for Virginia Tech. Long count by DeShazo. Getting thrown and incomplete, trying to hit Antonio Freeman. Down it around the sixth here. They're going to give it to him. Looked like from our angle upstairs, it looked like they might have been a trap. <laughs> well, the receivers always want to have the benefit of the doubt. He, I like the way Maurice looked him off. It was not a well-thrown ball, but you see a good receiver cups that ball. You get those hands down on the turf, and you avoid the ball from hitting the turf. So you watch that. He looks it right in. You get the cradle. That's an excellent reception. It sure is. We all the credit in the world to DeShazo and Freeman for hooking up on that one. Three wideouts for Virginia Tech on this third and five. DeShazo, the tight end guy, down to the 15. Check that down to the 10. That's Kevin Martin. Big senior. He's 239 pounds. Covered by Terrence Wiggins. Pretty good coverage that time by Wiggins. As you watch your shades on once again. With those shades on, now you can't see his eyes. See, that's a good technique for a quarterback. Ball not perfect. Big tight end. I like it when quarterbacks throw inside to those big guys. Those smart, bright, intelligent, good-looking people. <laughs> Guess what position Rick played? First and goal. Virginia Tech, they give it to Thomas. As they get outside, made a little positive yardage. Eric Shorter cut him down, number six. One thing down to about the eight-yard line. Dave, one thing you can tell right now about uh, the Eagles, they've decided to take away the edge. That time, Brian Edmonds comes out, real nice approach to the edge, but there's nothing given. Thomas, five carries, 15 yards thus far. Virginia Tech took over on a Brandon Salonis interception and a return of 24 yards. Freeman and White, the wideouts. White at the bottom of your screen. Second and goal for the eight. Shizzo. Pitch. Badly pitched and out of bounds. And what a break for Virginia Tech. If he got it to him, maybe six. Good pressure by Stephen Boyd on DeShazo. Boy, picture perfect. And there's so many ways you try to to defense the option. Number one, you got to take away the fullback. They do that. Then you get out second division to the quarterback. Good hit on Boyd. You always want to tattoo a quarterback every shot you get. It's a bad toss, and it looks loud like the Eagles might, might hold tough. I mean, give up three in this, Dave. You've done pretty well. There's Stephen Boyd, all big East. Three wide outs for Virginia Tech. Still to the top of your screen. Freeman and Holmes to the bottom. Third and goal for DeShazo. Great task. can't hold on. Hit him right in the hands. Yeah, there was nothing giving on that play. That's good defense. You know, Jim Reed's got to be tickled to death, defensive coordinator for the Eagles, because they're exactly where they want to be. Let's say he catches the football. Still, you got guys closing on it well. You don't pick up a first down, and you force him to kick. 
Coming up, field goal attempt. 31 yards by Adel Larson, junior out of Sola, Norway, which is in the southwest portion of Norway. 30,000 people. How did you feel that? One for two so far. Here's the spot in the placement. And it's no good. They hooked it. So BC withstands the turnover. And they have survived. BC will take over. No score. 9-18 to go here at Alumni Stadium. We'll be back after these words from our local stations. Field goal. He's the first soccer style kicker in nine years at Tech. Well, you check the snap. Conanty had it well. The hold by Shields looks good. Kick just missed. I mean, it, it happens. And you know that Tech fans are, are looking around. Where is Ryan Williams? Well, he's out for three weeks with a dislocated shoulder. Tough break. David Green, the lone setback. First and ten from the 20. Green. The running room breaks the tackle. Del Rico gets up to about the 29 yard line. Good blocks by Landry, 63, and Ariskovich, number 70, for Boston College. Boy, that's a good move. When you can get a guard like Landry, a 300-pounder, to get on the move, that reminds me of the old days with Henning with the counter gap and Russ Grimm filling up. And that's exactly what Landry did. You get it back with good vision, good acceleration, and you stick it up downfield. Good game. Be a short one for the Eagles. Bottom of your screen is Greg Grace. Gordon Laro, he leads. Green follows, but doesn't get the first down. Waverly Jackson, number 98, is there for Virginia Tech. Other direction in the Big East. Starting in a few minutes, Pitt will be at number 23, Ohio State. Later on, Maryland at West Virginia. Coming up later at 6 Eastern time, Temple hosting East Carolina. Rutgers at Syracuse at the Dome. Dan Henning. Short yardage situation for his Eagles right now. He's brought Justice Smith into the backfield. Third and inches. Justice Smith gets the puck, gets the corner. For William Yarborough. That's a big gain as Mark Norrie and Gordon Laro had terrific blocks, a gain of 17 yards. Once again, looks at the offensive line. Do you see Norrie with a nice block and then you get a spiel? That's bad contained. That's not how you coach it. Yarborough comes up to clean it up for the Hokies. Justice Smith, again, uh, Henning told us yesterday, has pro potential. And improve his work habits, but he's got the physical tools to say the least. First and ten. As they keep Smith as the lone setback. Balls at the 46. Hartsell throws and completes the Greg Grice. He's into Virginia Tech territory at the 46-yard line. Covered by Larry Green, number seven for Virginia Tech. Frank Beamer, head coach of Virginia Tech. Boy, is his defense going to be challenged by this young man. Let's see what Frank has to say. I think so. You know, he doesn't have great speed, but he's never been caught from behind. He's been, uh, he's been uh, uh, people closing on him, but he's never been caught. Uh, but I think that's kind of our football team. It's a hard-working football team. I think it's exciting in a lot of ways. But, yeah, I think Glenn is a lot like that team. So, Hartzell. Roger, dependable. Hartzell tried to get it to Greg Grace. Simonis broke it up. Well, that was an excellent hustle. Talk about Simonis getting getting a nice drop. And you see Green, the man-to-man -man coverage. See, the ball should be there now. The ball is late. You get a backer with a real nice break. And advantage goes once again to the Hokies. Balls at the Virginia Tech 47-yard line. Three wide outs for BC. Grace is in motion. Hartzell with one completion, bidding for more. Going for a lot here. Picked off, number 24. Oh, That's boy. William Yarborough. Big time play. And the second time, Hartzell's been intercepted. And the second time, he tried to get it to Kenyatta Watson. You know, sometimes you, there's just a small margin for error. And if you watch Hartzell, he drops back. Real nice look to it. Now, the ball should be released now. Just maybe a tad late. This is a super athletic play. A guy who may have been beaten, but he goes up, gets a vertical jump, Ball 
You know, sucks it in on the hands. The key for DBs to hold on. He does that. That was super. Showed some soft hands. A lot of times you see defensive backs fighting the ball. And Hartzell's been picked off twice thus far. Balls at the 22 for Virginia Tech. Flank the screen to Holmes. And a couple of blockers and finds an alley. And bangs his way up close to first down yardage. Across the 30 to about the 31 yard line. Good, and that sound is brutal in this game. <laughs> the Eagles, are, they're out hitting. Both sides are very aggressive early on. And you would expect Boston College may be a little tense. New stadium, you know, a lot of folks in, a lot of pressure on you, but you eventually they hope to settle down offensively. This expanded alumni stadium for Dan Henning and company. Up to capacity now, 44,500. Sometimes you just get 12, the, new seats. You know, Dave, Dave, you just get the residual of hitting, getting a hit on the quarterback. Both defensive coordinators aiming for that today. Second and short at the 31. And all white touchdown Tommy Edwards. Ooh, Tommy got hit in the back, but he's close to first down yard. It's Santa Bria got him, number 56. Tommy Edwards, sophomore out of Redford, Virginia. And they're going to bring in the chains to measure. And you talk about the play of Boston College. Stephen Boyd gets a lot of publicity, but Santa Bria has shown he's real active today. You want to close in. The down lineman really took the gap as well. And I'm really impressed so far with Boston College on the defensive end. Tommy Edwards picked up the first down. Ball's at the 33 for Virginia Tech. Dan Henning enjoyed. I know you enjoyed talking to Dan since uh, he coached you during your days with the Washington Redskins. Oh, yeah. Well, you watched the genesis of that offense back in 1981. Roll out action. Mamula Chisi. DeShizo throwing and completing to White. And a good close and a good hit, but they're going to call it the completion out of bounds. So wipe it off. The was, coverage and a good close by Daryl Porter. Yeah. That was a great call. And you have to fault the receiver on that. And we talk a lot about the shades on the run. This is White's, this is his responsibility to come down inbounds. You know, the great ones have an innate ability to just know where it's at and make it happen. That they do. And boy, would he like to do that one again, Cornelius White. Brings up a second and long. 33. 617 to go. No score here in the first period. Alumni Stadium. Three wide out. Look for Virginia Tech. The shades up. Trying to set up the screen. Oh, what a fake. And he barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Stephen Boyd, number 50. And he's finished off by Tim Morabito. Morabito with the pressure. Boyd finished him off. Boy, oh, you talk about team pressure. Mamola E, because he's going to collapse inside. Great spin move. What it does, it takes two of the tech linemen in. Didn't the a great move? But see, it's not for much. You pick up a yard, you get your quarterback hit twice. You don't want that offensively. You'd rather have him toss it up in the cheap seats and just reload. Chris Sullivan, number 93, involved in that play, too. Third down and 10. Wayne Thomas in that shotgun formation with DeShazo. Trying to get to the corner. Collinette forces. Does a good job. DeShazo going to throw on the run. And he's got White again, whose foot was out of bounds. His left foot was out of bounds. Second time in this possession. That White has done that. BC is held again. A good pressure by Stalin Kalanak. That's inexcusable. I mean, the kid's too good an athlete not to, to understand where he's at on the field. You work over this countless times in practice, trying to do tippy-toe drills, making sure that you that you're inbounds. And you just got to credit the defense. I'll continue to say that. Uh, good defensive scheme, they make you do things wrong. Virginia Tech has made two interceptions, and they have not been able to cash in. They missed a field goal, and they're turning it over on downs right now. Robbie Colley to punt to Kenyatta Watson. Good snap. A boomer. By Robbie Colley. Kenyatta Watson at the 28. Goes down. Good coverage. Penalty flags. I guess they're going to say it did not give him enough room. Michael Williams, number one. A 45-yard punt by Robbie Colley. John Smith and crew sorting things out. Five yard violation of the free catching zone by the kicking team. 
No score. Frank Beamer a little upset over that call. 5.15 to go. No score. We're back after these messages. A hot and humid Indian summer day here at Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Dave Sims and Doc Walker with you. No score. Check out this one. Do you think it's a good call? Well, no, I don't. I, I thought initially it was, but when you get a chance at, a, at the replay, I thought he had ample time to make the reception. And most guys that receive punts are tough guys. They don't mind taking it. BC takes over. And there was some movement on the line, so the whistles blow once again. As part of Molson's sponsorship. Full start. Offensive team. Five yard penalty. Still first down. As part of Molson's sponsorship of Biggie's football, we will be selecting the Molson Ice player of the game later in this telecast. BC back another five yards. It'll be second and uh, first and 15. Good news for BC that Dave Green is back on the field. He missed about four plays in the last season. Green the lone setback. Marks has been picked off twice today. This one not thrown real well. Intended for Green, number 14, Torrey and Gray covering. And I'll tell you what, the ball had been a little higher. Torrey and Gray had a shot at it, and he would have had six. Well, this is one of the reasons why I really enjoy pressure defense, and I'm surprised that more coaches on the collegiate level don't apply that kind of pressure. It changes a quarterback. None of those guys like to be hit. They're nice guys, but they don't <laughs> like to be hit. Bill Elmation said, hey, we're going to see if the young man can take some punishment. Second down and 15 at the 29. Three wide outs for D.C. Inside handoff, Green, nothing. 56 is there. Big play by Lawrence Lewis. Met the block and fought it off and made the tackle. Boy, Lewis plays this. You don't draw it up any better. You close inside, you keep your shoulder pad square, then you lock up and you finish. And there's all the guys in the white shirts. <laughs> Posse came to help. Clock rolling. 440. First period. Third and long for Hartzell and BC. Hartzell throws and throws behind Clarence Cannon. And BC will have to punt. Cannon was turning it inside, and Hartzell threw it outside. Yeah, the problem is that was his primary receiver. Everyone else was covered. So Tech has done an outstanding job right now being able to, A, get pressure, and B, cover in the secondary, most often, you know, man-to-man -man coverage. There's Jeff Beckley. Put up some impressive numbers at Michigan. And Antonio Freeman is deep to receive for Tech. Line drive, driving Freeman back. He makes the catch at the 20, gets a corner, with some good blocks, and gets it up to the 28-yard line. That's a punt of 51 yards, a return of eight yards. Eric Shorter made the tackle. 4.19 to go, first quarter in BC. We'll be back after these messages. We have not had the shootout we anticipated, but it's still early. 419 to go here at Boston College at Alumni Stadium. This copyrighted telecast is produced by 30 of the Big East Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Football Conference is prohibited. Virginia Tech takes over at its own 28. Good time for DeShazo. Throwing and completing to Brian Still. BC territory at the 48-yard line. Brian Still, last week had four catches and a touchdown, one for 41 yards. That's a 24-yard pickup. Well, one thing that Boston College has established is that Tech will not run on them. Now they've got to get some pressure on DeShazo. You cannot afford to give him that much time. It's a good operation, nice throw, good catch, and you move the chains. DeShazo did get a lick at the end of that play. Brian Still with a big completion. Ball in BC territory, 48. Shazo, straight back to throw, maximum protection, tight end is there. Loose ball, they're gonna call it a fumble, they're gonna call it an incompletion. Call it an incompletion at the 29-yard line. Rob Clifford made the stick, number 25. Knocked the ball free from Kevin Martin. 
any guy that's ever played this position, the one fear you have is when you go across the middle that you will be tattooed and hung out to dry. That was a good, clean hit. Boy, Clifford comes up. You want to put that helmet right on the ball. Right there. See, he has it. It was about to be a, a good catch. Just when I'm going to brag on the guy, Clifford comes up and knocks it out. Second down and 10. Wayne Thomas reshifts. Fake it. Looking, looking, and nobody there. In fact, the only eligible receiver. And the Boston College fans are saying, hey, we wanted a lateral, and John Smith and crew wipe it off. It's an incompletion. <laughs> A lot of confusion on that. Let's see if we can check it. See if it was a lateral or not. See, he throws across the body. Ah. Yeah, They're looking for a flanker screen on that one for Brian Still, but he went upfield. Well, Shorter almost had a almost had a big one. The numbers for DeShazo, not pretty to this point. It's a third down and ten. Shotgun with. Thomas in the backfield with Edmonds, and he probably took too much time as Colinette looked like he had a free one on DeShazo. Dead ball, false start, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. Frank Beamer doesn't have a lot to show offensively. He's had two picks by the defense. And the offense hasn't been able to capitalize. Yeah, but it's early on. It, again, you have implemented some new twists on offense. With Gary Tranquil now, offensive coordinator, this young man, Maurice Shazo, trying to pick up new nomenclature. So it, it takes some time. Good tight end word, nomenclature. UCLA man. Shazo steps up right into the grasp of Chris Sullivan. He thought he had a man. He had still downfield at the 15-yard line, and Sullivan makes a big play for Boston College. This is a classic coverage sack. I mean, sometimes those big guys get in, and he's, he's faced up, but what you don't see downfield is pretty good coverage. Brian Steele downfield running a post route. There you watch it right in your living room. Maurice tries to step up, but there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and you're going down, pal. That's a good play by Sullivan. Chris Sullivan, the big play. We have an injured Virginia Tech Hokie. You know, Sullivan's a guy who's not noted for his pass rushing skills, good against the run. So when you get a bonus, when you get a guy like a D, D tackle that can come in and put pressure on the quarterback. It's Billy Kennedy, the starting center, and also the snapper on the Virginia Tech punt team. Well, they had a good one last year. Jim Pine. Everybody's all American. If you're Dan Henning, what are you telling Mark Hartzell at this moment? Settle down. You know, you just settle down and. We're at Alumni Stadium, the newly expanded Alumni Stadium, Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. No score with 317 to go first quarter. And we've got a new center for Virginia Tech, Tim Wade, number 72. Robbie Colley, 51 yards his last time out. Another high hanging kick. Kenyatta Watson fields at the 21. And finished off by Michael Williams. The first guy there was number four. That's Cornelius White, one of the wideouts. A punt of 39 yards for Robbie Colley. It was a replay from the prior punt. Now, if you're Dan Henning, what you say to your quarterback is, we settled down a little bit, and, and let's be realistic about this. Well, Pete Mitchell, they're all American. He's yet to touch the football. So you got to go to your strengths. And this is what happens when you can't run. Get a little discombobulated, you settle down. I'd like to see a couple quick screens, some things to settle the offense. Virginia Tech, so I uh, checked that Boston College to this point has had three plays in an interception, six plays in a pick, three plays in a punt. Three wide outs for BC. Nice pitch on motion. Nice play on David Green. The force by Ken Brown, number 44. Mag he made it happen. Magnificent. Kenny Brown, Hank Coleman was there too, number six with a good pop. Well, Pete Mitchell had a nice block on the edge. Now we all get a chance to play QB. Here, a nice inside handoff. And as you watch, there's a lot of a lot of burgundy shirts out getting good blocks there by Nori, but it just collapses. 
Boy Brown played that well. Second and ten. Hart to the throw over the middle. Pete Mitchell. There's the big All-American tight end. And he's up to about the 29-yard line. Torian Gray, number 14, with the coverage for Tech. Well, he just has unusual skills. For a guy close to 240 pounds, has a real feel for the offense. Penalty flag on the play. Hart to throw. And right in the hands of all people, Pete Mitchell dropped it. Dan Henning said, you can't believe how good his hands are, and he let it get into his pads. You know what happens? You get anxious. You want the football so bad, and you'd have been playing this game for five or six minutes, and they have come Illegal motion. Well, he knew it would be a flag. He's a tight end. See, they have the ability <laughs> to anticipate things like that. <laughs> Penalty has been declined. Fourth down. So the BC offense, after the fine showing at Michigan, cannot get going today against Virginia Tech. But you know, that's the thing about offense. You don't have to play it real well early on. You don't have to be real cute about it. If your defense is playing the way <laughs> that Boston College is playing and Tech as well, you can get away with this early. BC's offense at Michigan, 503 yards and no uh, uh, sacks. Good job by Beckley on the punt. Freeman picking up his wall. Oh, what a big block. Everybody saw that. All kinds of pops. Santa Brig got drilled. Boy, Spinner. Brian Spinner, number, make that Baron Spinner, number 15, with a big pop. 48-yard punt, a five-yard return. And Santa Brig got lit up. Boy, that was a nice kiss in the chops coming up right here. I like that. Oh, it took D. Cleet oh, yeah. too. He did. We used to call those perfect no-hitters. If the helmet hits the turf and the cleat goes straight up in the air, you've done a real good job. <laughs> yeah, he pitched a no-hitter. All right. Virginia Tech will take over now. 27-yard line. No score. 151 to go. No winner. Santa Brea, how about that? His replacement, Brian May, comes in to make the play on Wayne Thomas. Well, we knew we'd get a chance to see May play a lot. They're really high on him. Here you watch Mamula. Not only is this guy good rushing the passer, but he understands how to play the run as well. No gain on that play. Edmonds, the up back, the deep back is Wayne Thomas. Ball at the 27. Thomas in motion. Shazo. Throws short. Martin the tight end. To about the 39. He's got the first down for Virginia Tech. Brian May with the tackle. Brian May number 46 for Boston College. Martin a big target. He had just one catch last year. It's off a real good spring. Brian May out of Valley College, New York. Did get the first down. Deshazo, same play. Martin is there. Into BC territory to about the 48. Stephen Boyd is there. Brian May also. Looks like they're going to run that play until BC stops him. Ball's at the 48 of BC. Real nice look at, at two deep in the coverage and the linebackers trying to cheat up. That's the benefit of play action. And a good tight end settles right in the sweet spot. You get right in the crease and catch the football and take it downfield. Ah, I like that. <laughs> 41 <laughs> seconds of counting. Ray Thomas finds a hole. Makes people miss. Post the first down yardage. They had to get to the 38, and he's real close. Good run by Dwayne Thomas. Call a timeout to measure. It's the best rush run so far. Stephen Boyd at the time got a little bit out of position, missed the tackle. Thomas, seven carries, 25 yards. And he did pick up the first down. A new center for Virginia Tech, Todd Washington, number 75. He threw a good block in there. That's a big guy, freshman, 300 pounder. The pages.
20 seconds. First and 10 at the 38. And big hold by Brian Edmonds. Edmonds down to the 26-yard line. Give credit on that play number 54, Damian McMahon. He put a lick on one of the BC defenders to open it up for Edmonds. Yeah, good league with Brian May. Tried to sell out on this one, and he missed the play. See, there he had a position. He overruns it. Then Boyd, he, again, he misses it. And give some credit to Edmonds. Just solid as a rock. I love this guy inside the tackles. Tough man at 5'10", 230 from Blackstone, Virginia. So, so far, the fireworks have not exploded. No score after 15 minutes complete at Alumni Stadium. We'll be back with the second quarter after these words from our local stations. Students having a good time here at Boston College. Dedication day of the new Alumni Stadium, which has been expanded to 44,500. Dave Sims and Doc Walker with you here in the Big East Football Conference TV Network. Hot and humid day as Virginia Tech with its best looking drive of the afternoon. Right now, first and 10 at the BC 26. Thomas gets the call again. And hit hard by Stephen Boyd. There's Boyd. You know, you start to wonder. Two plays and you get by him, and you're not going to get by him three. He is just too good. Great senior leadership. All Big East last year. Led in tackles. See, real nice shuffle. Keep the shoulders square. That is the key. Sometimes you see young, inexperienced backers overrun plays and get out of position. That was a good play. No gain on that play either. Thomas in motion this time. Shazo, quick drop. Hit, gone. Pressure by Matt Half with the blitz, number 57. Yeah, and that's a stinger. Let's see how he gets up and deals with it right now. DeShazo limping, and that's as bad a news as he can get for Virginia Tech's second BC sack. That is a stinger. Matt Half and Stephen Boyd, both guys redeemed themselves. And you watch it right on the left side. See, that's, that's one of those hip pointers. That is a ride deal right on that soft tissue, right above the thigh, right under the, the abdomen. Oh, man, that's bad. Or you get an ankle in it. It'd be a combination ankle and hip pointer. Well, that brings in the backup quarterback. That's an important story at Virginia Tech right now. DeShazo hurt. Jim Druckenmiller comes in. 6'5", 223 is a big man. And his numbers in relief work last year here at BC. Big spot for him. Third and 14. DeShazo with the big gun. They throw the safe screen. Run down by Sullivan. Sullivan runs down Dwayne Thomas. Big defensive play for BC. Chris has been real active. He had a sack. In the last series, he's played to run well. Now he's extending himself. Drucken Mill, they like him a lot. And this offense now may tone down. That's just a flat missed block. I mean, you can't expect to have people running free on your quarterback this first play. Billy Kennedy is back. He'll be at center. And the numbers to this point, Rick, have been all for the defense. Oh, it really has. This is not what anybody expected, especially Boston College won first down and you look at total yards of 43 the turnovers are the key two turnovers that has really been the thing that had hurt Virginia Tech in prior weeks time of possession this is ridiculous 10 20 to 4 40 no points to show for it and an official was hurt looked like he jammed a finger it's tough I mean you know we give these guys a hard time but I would not want to put on those striped shirts and not have a helmet on I think officials should wear helmets they ought to have headgear on Maybe like hockey helmets or Why something. Why not? I mean, you're right in the middle of the battle. Put on a hit gear. Take a hit. Shays are trying to walk it off. What a contrast, Rick. Last year, these two teams combined for 1,126 total yards. And today, first quarter, just a buck 44. 49 yard attempt by Adel Larson from the right hash mark. Snap. Got a lot of leg. And it's true. Adel Larson with a 49-yard field goal. And Virginia Tech with the Shazo Hurt has taken a 3-0 lead early on second quarter here at BC. We're back after these messages. Back here at Virginia Tech in BC, up 3-0. The Hokies lead it. Adel Larson with a field goal 48 yards officially. 
And boy, he got a lot of it, Rick. He really did. What I like is the body language. Now watch him. The good kickers are trying to coax this ball in. Now he's leaning a little left. And then, yeah, okay, pretty subtle. I missed one early, but I, I got this one. All right. Adel Larson's a transfer from Moorhead State, Kentucky. Division one AA. They dropped football and he was able to play immediately, and he chose Virginia Tech. Sola Norway and first soccer style kicker since Tom Taracani nine years ago at Virginia Tech. You know, Mark Mosley, uh, my old kicker, has done a lot of work with, with uh, a lot of their athletes, Williams in particular, and really it's a dying breed now to see the straight on field goal kicker. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's rough. I go all the way back, and I know you do, beyond Luke Rosa. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, the toe. <laughs> Number 76, Cleveland Browns, Hall of Famer. Those days when you have a kicker, the kicker would be about 260. The guy would come out and be the life of the party. Things have changed a lot. <laughs> yeah, to <laughs> say the least. All right, the wind uh, going to force Virginia Tech to get some help here. Stacy Henley will hold it. He said it was blowing out of the southwest 15 to 25 miles per hour. Tony Ransom and Kenyatta Watson deep for Boston College. 3 nothing Virginia Tech just underway here in the second quarter. 13-27 to go, and here's the kick by Larson. It's a line drive right at Kenyatta Watson. He takes it, does the prudent thing, and goes for the touchback. So a good few segments with Adam Larson. I want to give you some thoughts from the Virginia Tech coach, Frank Beamer, about his defensive unit and what they have to do against Boston College this afternoon. Their receivers are good. Their offensive line, I think, is probably the best in the Big East. Their quarterback came in and played great against Michigan uh, in, a, in a pretty pressured situation. So, uh, you know, I, I think they, uh, they'll, they'll perform very well, and it's up to us to perform very well now. Penalty flag on that play, and boy, what a blitz by Kenny Brown. He got in, slightly overran the play. Penalty flag. Green got the carry, but boy, Kenny Brown was in there in a heartbeat. Holding offense. Boston College has got to regroup, Rick. Well, if it's not regroup, they got to get started. I mean, they've done, <laughs> right. they've done nothing so far. <laughs> and if they can, uh, when you can't establish a run, it really puts you on your heels. And they got to get good play out of the quarterback position. Hartshill, obviously, a little flustered after a couple of Rydells on his chest protector. But uh, I, I do believe he's still down. Offense. The penalty is assessed from the end of the run. After this is the goal line, first down. So Frank Beamer right now has the field position edge on Dan Henning. They have first and 15, make that a first and 20. First and 20 for Boston College. Ball's back at the 10 yard line. Dan Henning needs to get a little bit of uh, some juice to his offense right now. He's got three tight ends. Brace in motion. Green the carry stop immediately. The right defensive end for Virginia Tech. Lawrence Lewis forced it with help from Kenny Brown. So Sometimes you have to break the norm. That was an obvious run situation. And, and you look at that. <laughs> We're talking about a shootout, folks. We had a beautiful open, but not much after that. <laughs> Nine plays, 41 yards, 322 on the Clark. At least just three points on the board. And, and Tech feels like they can win three to nothing. Green, no yards on that uh, carry been fruitless his last four getting nothing and this one not much better gets a couple the whole front line was there for Virginia Tech and this note on Maurice DeShazo he's got a slight bruise of his right thigh is expected to return the next series well that's much better than a hip pointer and an ankle is a thigh and that thigh will be awful tough to deal with tomorrow but they're not concerned about tomorrow right now DeShazo itching to get back in <laughs> His opposite number is Mark Hartzell, and the number's not very productive. It's third down and 18. Hartzell sending everybody out. That time, a lot of time. Throws off the back foot, hangs it up for Watson. Out of bounds. 
The coverage by number seven, Larry Green. But good coverage by Virginia Tech. Well, see, so you're hoping, you're hoping something will happen, and instead of making something good happen, you're sitting back on your back foot and you, uh, you know, you pant the football. The play is not, it's not there, and you force your defense in a bad situation. Sooner or later, you know, the Eagles will start to tire. And what you need is first downs. Move the chains and give those guys a break. Beckley will punt his numbers today. Hartzell, BC quarterback, two for ten with two picks, and BC unsettled on the field. They're probably short a man or two, so they've called timeout. 11.43 to go, second period. Virginia Tech has a 3-0 lead on BC. We'll be back after these words from our local stations. Doc Walker, and we're joined in the booth by the 1960 Heisman Trophy winner out of the Naval Academy, Joe Bellino. And Joe, good to have you with us here. Uh, Dave, it's a pleasure to be with you. BC has struggled on offense, and we'll look at Beckley. And a good punt by Beckley, a beauty as he knocks Freeman all the way back to the 39. Freeman does a good job to get this far, does a real good job oh, to get to boy. the 49. Nicely done by Antonio Freeman. Beckley with a booming punt. And that punt covered 48 yards, a return of 10. And our guest, Joe Bellino, the 1960 Heisman Trophy winner. Joe, what brings you uh, back to your home area? Here? Well, I'm, I live in this area, but uh, Merrill Lynch and the Heisman uh, the Downtown Athletic Club have uh, co-sponsored a scholarship foundation program, and we uh, we award $2,000 every year every uh, year to uh, local college. DeShazo back in the game, going to go for the home run ball. Throws it way downfield. It's incomplete penalty flag on the play. Freeman, the intended receiver. Maurice DeShazo is back in the game. Holding offense. So there's a break for BC. Always glad to see former Heisman Trophy winners involved in scholarship programs. Well, it's it's, it's something that we're proud of, and the, and the program's going great. What's your thoughts on college football today as opposed to 30 years Holding ago when you were winning offense. your Heisman Trophy? The 10-yard penalty is assessed from the spot of the foul. Still first down. It's a two-way football. Uh, 30 years ago, we played both offense, defense. Now you've got more specialties. You need about 60 ball players to play nowadays. When I played, we used to dress 33 players. So you played and running that's back? The big, that's the big uh, Offense, defense, punt return, kickoff return, all those positions. That's the biggest thing. That's down Tommy Edwards back to maybe the 40-yard line for Virginia Tech. You know, the interesting part about it, even on the high school level now, the better high schools are, are platooning players. They're in the specialists as well. It used to be a day where in high school you, you played every play. You never left the field. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's, it's 90 degrees out there. And these ball players, they're, they're big players. If they had to play both ways, I think you'd see smaller players out there today. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> That's a good point. Second down and 19. Virginia Tech with a 3 nothing lead. They got a long way to go for this first down. DeShazo, the option pitch, fumble loose ball. Edwards picked it up with a break for Tech. Stephen Boyd was there, as usual, involved in the play, as long with, along with Mamula, who put a pop on DeShazo. Well, that was a friendly bounce on the visiting turf. That's not, you don't see that too often. Once again, DeShazo shows he's well going back to the option. Well, that's the best way to play it. Put the helmet right on the pads. This is the second ball he's put on the turf, running the option. Joe, you ran out of uh, what's that? What type of offense? Oh, no, we had a split T, a pro set. Uh, you know, we threw the ball half the time and ran the ball half the time. You played for Wayne Hart, and you knew you were going to spread it around a oh, little bit. He could coach one of the best. Balls at the 37-yard line. They bring the whole package. The Shazo though scrambles out of trouble. Takes up a block and takes it out of bounds at the 46-yard line. So he picks up nine yards on that play. It'll be fourth down and long for Virginia Tech. Well, Joe, thanks for stopping by. Good to see you. Thanks, and uh, hopefully uh, get a chance to see you down at the DAC for the Heisman Trophy dinner. Thanks again. All the best. Joe Bellino, the 1960 Heisman Trophy winner out of the Naval Academy, joining us here in the booth at Alumni Stadium. Another punting opportunity for Robbie Colley. Yana Watson is deep. The rush. They almost got a piece. 
Grace was there. Grace had a great game against Temple last year. And a good Virginia Tech bounce, and it goes out of bounds at the eight-yard line. That's a punt of 47 yards for Robbie Colley. Not the shootout we anticipated, but a good game nonetheless. 3-0 <laughs> Virginia Tech. We're back after these messages. Good looking shot at Alumni Stadium. Virginia Tech up 3-0 on BC in the second quarter. Make sure you join us next week. We'll see the same Boston College Eagles. They will take on the improved Pittsburgh Panthers. Noon start Eastern time here on the Big East Football Conference Television Network. Look at this average gain on first down. Tech 7 0 to 2.8. Yet not a lot of offense in these two teams last year. 1,126 yards total offense. Green strung out, maybe gets to the 10 yard line. J.C. Price was the first one there, number 59. Got the pop in. Good pressure by Antonio Banks, the free safety, too. That may not look like a lot, but it was. Waverly Jackson missed an opportunity to stop it uh, on the opposite side of the ball, and you've got to continue to run. I know a lot of folks are thinking, what are they doing? Throw the football. You must not get out of your game plan. Two happiest guys in the ballpark, probably the defensive coordinator. Mitchell in motion. Give it to Green. Cuts back real well. Nice play. He'll be short of first down yardage. He's about he's up to the 15 yard line. BC got a good block on Cornell Brown, number yeah. 58. That's his best run of the day. You see Brown there, maybe a little pull on it. The Orico will kind of spill outside. And then you watch, not a lot of white shirts converging until the end. Best run of the day for David Green. Green and Laro in the backfield for BC. Third down and two. Balls at the 15. That's Grace in motion. Green trying to get outside. Barely gets to the line of scrimmage. George Del Rico at the bottom of the pile for Virginia Tech. And the fans unsettled here at BC. Good well, defensive sequence. Well, it's tough. You know, Tech, they'll put seven, eight men in the box. There you watch Del Rico, who plays it kind of blind, just kind of puts his head down like a battering ram and goes in. And now it looks like <laughs> it looks like they'll have to exchange the football. BC is yet to uh, get more than one first down today. Well, you know, it's uh, it's tough. We're talking about three tight ends in the game, and you still can't run the football. That uh, Beckley shakes it. Bad punt. Makes a BC roll, goes out of bounds at the 44 yard line. Is that tip? Bad punt of only 28 yards. So Frank Beamer, his club will start in terrific field position. 7.34 to go here in the second period. 3 0 Tech. That was an ugly punt. Let's see, usually that'll result. Yep, bad snap. Snap moves a punter out just a little bit. Still had time, but it gets your rhythm off. Boy, Pete Mitchell. Smile on Beamer's face. That's unusual. Reason to beam. DeShazo back. Pitches. Thomas with a lot of room. Cornelius went with a super block penalty flag. Probably a hold as Thompson gets inside the 20. The block by number four, Cornelius White. Sprung Dwayne Thomas, but a penalty flag on the play. Well, it was a great block in the beginning, but towards the end, I think he got caught. He held on at the end. Tough on wide receivers. Holding I admire. Offense. And keep your eye on the right-hand side of your screen on this. We'll see if we can give you a good shot. See, here he's got him. That's, that's good football. You keep square, but at the end, see, when you're losing it, you got to just know that you're back offense. and do it. During the run, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still first down. He had a hold of number 44, Daryl Porter. It's tough on wide receivers. You're 10 yards downfield. You just have to have the presence of mind to know that, hey, we've already picked up five or six yards. Maybe I can ease off or chop block the DBs. They hate to be cut. Ball just over the 45-yard line. First and long for Tech. Thomas in motion. DeShazo, short drop, tight end, most dependable receiver today. Boyd, another tackle for BC at the 40 yard line. Kevin Martin with another catch. 
Kevin Martin, as we tell you that uh, coming up at halftime, we'll take a look back at last week in the Big East. We'll visit with the new coach here at BC, Dan Henning, and we'll have stats and highlights of the first half. Martin on the afternoon, Kevin Martin, the tight end, a senior, four catches, 37 yards. Second down to Shazo, out on the corner. Close, got a man, Cornelius White down the sideline. First down, Virginia Tech inside the 20 to the 17 yard line. Cornelius White, he beat the coverage of Porter and Shorter. Well, he makes up for the hole. See, play action can help. When you can run, good things happen. Linebackers there caught kind of flat, pretty decent pass. This is where I like the good receivers. See, they make things happen. Pick up four or five yards. Pretty decent route. Come back to the football. That's key. The pickup of 22 yards. Dwayne Thomas finds a way to get through the defense of BC. Inside the 15. Looked like he might have been stopped at the line of scrimmage by Morabito and Colinette. Boyd finally brought him down. Boyd even lost his hat. I love to see those tough nosed guys. Linebackers, helmets flying off, and you're still going after the play without a hat. Two wide outs, bottom of your screen. Holmes and White. Second down and six. Three nothing Virginia Tech. On count, Thomas gets the call. Drags Boyd down to the 10 yard line. Matt Half there, number 57, two for a BC. See, fatigue eventually uh, will become a factor, and I think it has set in on, on the Eagles. That time, McMahon, Biachin, excellent uh, on the right side. Those guys leaning out, those offensive linemen. Martin, again, the tight end with a good block. They're just starting to crank it up now, slowly but surely. Martin out of Annandale, Virginia. He played good football in Annandale, one of the top-rated clubs in the country. White at the bottom of your screen. Holmes at the top. Third and three at the 10. Tech leads 3 nothing. The Shays on option. Edmonds, yeah, maybe two. I don't think he got the first down. Morabito, number 58, first to meet him. It's going to be close. They ran the option to Brian Edmonds, and Tim Morabito out of Garnerville, New York, makes the tackle. It will be fourth and one. Tech is going to go for it. DeShazo stays in. They bring in Brian Jennings, number 81, an additional tight end. Uh, you don't hesitate when you can run the option. You never hesitate on short yardage. Fourth and one. This after 28-yard punt by BC. Power eye formation. Both tight ends reset. Oh, my goodness. They're loading up the right side. Thomas gets it. They got a man on man. They stop him. Big play. Number 57, Matt Half, beat the defense. He beat the extra blockers on the side, and BC takes over. They tried to overload the right side, Rick, and a good job by the Eagles. Well, that's when you stick it in your face football. You go to two tight ends, you get the unbalanced, and you pound them, and you get rejected. Boy, half plays this well. Oh, what a collision inside by Boyd. That starts things off. Then half again. Shoulder placement is excellent. And look at those gold hats, man. Guys flying to the football. It's a frenzy on the field. Boy, they love it here at, now. They love it here at BC. Three nothing. BC is held. Tech leads by three. Back after these messages. Virginia Tech leading here at Boston College, and Stephen Boyd kept it from mounting on a big play right here. Look at that. Twelve tackles. Virginia Tech tried the overload. BC won that battle. The defensive field position right now in favor of Tech. Hartson to throw. Under pressure. Closed on is Green, taken down by Torian Gray at the 13-yard line. Make it the 14-yard line. Hartzell, a short, safe throw. And Penn State, not a surprise. Iowa getting hammered. Virginia leading Clemson. Still a close game at Columbus, Ohio. LSU and Auburn. And we've got a change at quarterback. Hartzell just took himself out of the game, and they're trying to call a timeout to try to rush in Jeff Ryan, number eight. So Hartzell came off to the sideline, and he's hurting. He has his right hand. They are. They're working on his right hand. 
Randy Shroud to the left. Trainer in the glasses. You know, sometimes you, you release the football and you end up right on the helmet. And if you happen to hit the side of the chin strap, I mean, it is it's vicious. One thing this does is gives that BC defense a little breather. Sure does. And obviously it gives the left-hander Jeff Ryan an opportunity to warm up. Jeff Ryan out of Waltham, Mass. 6'2", 211, a junior, majoring in communication. Oh, yeah, he's got a jammed thumb. That thing hurts. Yeah, it does. As, as we watch the replay, so he gets the snap. You know, he sets up. Offensive line, pretty good pro. Now watch, he throws, and he comes some, right down. Yeah. Made yep. some contact with Jim Barron, number 92. Could have been Barron. He knows he's hurting. All right, so we get a look at Jeff Ryan, and there's some blood on the scene. That's not pretty. Might well, have broken a, a nail. Well, it's, a, it's the uh, chin strap that buckle. Jeff Ryan, the left-hander, comes in in relief of Mark Hartzell. Drops the ball, comes up firing, and incomplete to Greg Rice. Always tough when you bring that new quarterback in on that first snap, especially under fire. And he, it's a pretty bad cut. I wonder. Well, we'll get word a little bit later, but all the best to Mark Hartzell. Jeff Ryan, his first action today. Three for 11, two picks. Had a pass last week. Third down and long for Jeff Ryan. Under pressure, screen almost picked off. Cornell Brown got his right hand on it. That's a good an opportunity as a defensive end will ever have to get six. Yes, I think it's time to punt. Unfortunate, too, for the Eagles. They come out, get a good play on first down, pass to David Green. Archiel with the injury to his hand. Ryan comes in, fumbles the first snap, throws an incomplete pass, comes out and almost puts the ball right in the hands of 58 Cornell Brown. So Tech should still come out of this with pretty good field position. Bad snap. Beckley stays with it this time. Fair catch being called for, made by Freeman. He's in BC territory at the 47-yard line, a punt of 33 yards. Freeman's deadly. At a 61-yard return against Arkansas State, it gives him another option. You know, you can only put your defense in bad field position so many times, and sooner or later, you know, you'll bend and get a break. Virginia Tech now has an opportunity to really explode on the Eagles if they can get a big play. Looking at Alumni Stadium, the end zones have been double-decked. In fact, the end zone to your left has been uh, totally enclosed. And those are some of the numbers that went into it. A big project and a very successful one. Tommy Edwards, the deep back in the eye. Nishizo, throwing wide open mark down the middle. The tight end inside the 25 to the 22-yard line. He's finally brought down by Rob Clifford. Big gain for Deshazo and Virginia Tech. Well, when you've got receivers on the outside, Steele and Freeman, they've got great talent. You're in a two-deep defense. There, DeShazo, kind of a little pump fake out. The middle is wide open. Now, you're going to have to put a back, a linebacker on Martin, maybe play him a lot tougher on the line of scrimmage. But so far, he has really been a dominant factor. Five catches, 62 yards for Kevin Martin. First and 10 at the 22. DeShazo, fake, got a man down there. Freeman had Michael Reed, the cornerback, beaten on that play. I like him a lot. Shays a little upset with himself, wanted to put the ball more upfield. It's tough to throw the fade route. Got a lot of things going against you, like the out of bounds and no wind conditions today, though, so that's, that would not be a factor. Numbers improving for DeShazo, and he's obviously feeling well after suffering a thigh problem. Second down and 10 at the 22. 3 one to go. Second quarter. Virginia Tech leads BC 3-0. Quick drop. Closes, and a sack. Back to the 30. Boyd is there. 
Stephen Boyd, another big play for Boston College. And obviously, DeShazo had a miscommunication, Rick Walker, on that play because he wanted to throw it quickly. Yeah, he did. They wanted to get back at high percentage rhythm passing. See, the ball's supposed to release right there. Now he's in trouble, and you can't give Boyd a second chance. You're going to pay for it. It's a loss back to the 29 yard line, a loss of seven yards. Third and 17. Out of the shotgun. They roll him, throwing it to the end zone. He's got a man there. Freeman, he overthrew him. Freeman wide open at the goal line. Blown coverage. Shorter was there with Terrence Wiggins. And they turn back saying, hey, where was 44? And if you, if Daryl Porter standing back at the 15 with his hands on his helmet these saying, guys, I blew it. These guys are wondering. That's the benefit of the dash or the sprint rollout. Because you have to support DeShazo because he can beat you on the run. And then you get a great athlete like Freeman who breaks free. And it, it hurts him. I mean, that was a good opportunity to put six on the board. Adel Larson has hit from 48 yards. This will be a 45-yard attempt. This time from the left hash mark, last time from the right. High snap. Out of lane. And it's no good. He pushed it to the right. So Adel Larson today, one for three field goals. He has made from 48, missed from 31, and 45 yards out. Well, he had a chance to be a hero, and so far he's not been able to come through. And BC, sometimes it helps to get a little lucky. You have your starting quarterback out. They've yet to really get their All-American Mitchell into the game. Yeah, we talk a lot about that body English on the one. He was successful. The hole looks good. The kick, a little follow-through, kind of muffed. He's leaning, but no, not this guy. Poor body Norwegian. Ryan, the quarterback. A handoff to number 28, Anthony Comer. Brings a little buzz from the crowd. Local guy. Torian uh, Gray with the tackle. Coming up at halftime last week in the Big East Conference. Bringing up close with Dan Henning, and we'll have some stats and highlights. And we can tell you this, too, about the starting quarterback for Boston College, Mark Hartzell, has a laceration of the right middle finger and a dislocated right ring finger, and it's questionable if he will return. Second down at six. Ryan Comer. Comer to the 35, to the 37, close to a first down. Broke a couple of tackles there. Comer's a good one. He really is. Out of Brockton. You know, the thing about him is that he's got a lot of talent, but he missed some fall, fall work. And they feel like if he can just get up to speed in the program, that he has exceptional skills. Once again, we've not had a chance to watch a lot of this. Boston College, there you got a guy on him. See, an average back goes down there. And he doesn't. Just keeps the lower legs churning, you know, forward body lean, all the good attributes of the great ones. He's also fresher, too, in this hot and humid day. That's a first down by the nose of the ball. So Anthony Comer making a difference right now for our stagnant BC offense. Second first down of the game for Boston College. Pittsburgh on the board and hanging in there. Second period at Ohio State. Just underway, Maryland and West Virginia. First and 10 with a 115 to go. Yeah, first down for BC, do you believe? Tough afternoon. Ryan to throw, looking screen, set it up. It's red. Homer makes a nice play, but then he's ganged up on. Penalty flag on the play. You may have a face mask on this one. JC Price first there for Virginia Tech. That was an ugly play, slow developing. Everything going against it. And we've got an injured player. J.C. Price is on his back. Walking the back. Offense. The wheels haven't fallen off that offense, but they're certainly teetering. <laughs> J.C.'s a good one. Had an outstanding performance last year in the Independence Bowl. He's a tough guy. Really leads that defensive line. The tough part about coaching, you know, you get out and you spend all that work trying to get your quarterback ready and 
and you never know how long the kid will be able to play, and then you get a uh, dislocated finger and a laceration of a throwing hand from a quarterback. Pretty tough to squeeze it. We may very well not see Hartshell again. During the run, illegal block in the back, ball the waist, offense. I wonder if yards from the end of the run, still first down. I wonder if the victim was J.C. Price. Probably one of the reasons why J.C. was on his back. You know, last time Virginia Tech had the ball, the last two times, consecutive possessions, they have started in B.C. territory. They have zero points. 61 seconds to go here. First half, Virginia Tech leading 3 0. First down and 22 for Boston College. And you hear the Virginia Tech folks calling for a timeout, and they get one. So, Phil O'Mation's defense has done a whale of a job. Last year, talking to, talking to Phil this week, that was a bad game plan, poorly executed. Yeah, this is payback. And they were really looking forward to this. And when you play the pressure type defense, you always put your secondary in a position to where you can give up a big one. But so far, BC's not been in the pocket long enough to be able to look downfield. And if you've yet to establish the run, you really don't have a lot going for them offensively. BC's been looking at a lot of long down situations. Also kind of strange to see. BC with the football and not have Pete Mitchell be more of a factor in the offense. Last year, Ken Brown was burned badly by Pete Mitchell, and they've obviously paid a lot of attention to. So they're not going to let uh, and have not let Mitchell really breathe all afternoon. Well, he's only had one catch for eight yards, and that's uh, just, that's just not the kind of ball he we're accustomed to uh, to seeing. First down and 22 at the 26-yard line for Jeff Ryan and BC. Give it to Comer on the draw. Does well to spin to the 31. Boy, Price. Talk about a he-man return. And a late hit, a late hit by number 66, Pete Kendall. After the whistle, he put a vicious lick on Torian Gray, knocked him down, and the official saw it. Dead ball, personal foul, offense. Well, you like to see offensive guys, you know, fight back. You don't have to just be passive because you're on offense, but that's ridiculous. So you're frustrated and you want to do good play, things. Get ball, personal foul, offense. So the negative penalty, second down. Negative yardage building for Dan Henning's BC offense. And it's unfortunate because they picked up a first down, the second of the day. So the ball is back at the 15 yard line. Second down and 33. Marching in reverse. BC taking over after a missed 45 yard field goal. Jeff Ryan, the new quarterback, Mark Hartzell with some hand injuries. Questionable if he'll be back. Ryan to throw over the middle. He's got Greg Grice. Out of open field. Tackle made by Ken Brown at the 33. Grice had some open real estate. That's uh, against Michigan. A 74-yard reception. Third and 15 at the 33. Flags all over the place. Ryan over the middle. Grice, same play to the 40. Still well short of a first down. Five seconds left in the game clock. This is a club that needs to get into halftime as soon as possible. Oh, you bet. Regroup. And, you know, we talked about it in the... Offsides, defense. There's a break for BC. In the open wide, Dan Henning elected to kick off and not receive. See, now it pays off. Did you get a chance to get the football when you come out in the third quarter and hopefully settle the troops down? Well, they need it right now. No question about it. Jeff Ryan, last year, did not play much. He was the third string quarterback, went one for three for 12 yards and had an interception. Offsides, defense. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat third down. Ball's at the 38-yard line. And that brings up third down and 11. And the clock has run out. They run out. So 30 minutes complete. Not the shootout we anticipated. Virginia Tech with a 3-0 lead here at Alumni Stadium. 
And Henning giving a long stare down to the officiating crew. That's the end of our first half. Virginia Tech leads it 3 0. We'll be back with our halftime activities after these words from our local stations. Some of the numbers for the first 30 minutes, they read like this only two first downs for. Boston College about one a quarter. I mean it's not what Dan Henning is accustomed to but it takes time to implement a, a new system and when your quarterback is a little rattled you got to give Phil Al Almation a lot of credit the tech defense got after him they hit him in the first quarter and he was never the same quarterback when you can't establish the run you're just in a tough situation. I mean look at it 53 yards on the ground for BC and they have to run the ball a lot more than Virginia Tech would quarterback numbers to this point. For BC, Hartzell three for 11. Tough day with the two picks, and Ryan with a slow start in relief. Well, uh, neither quarterback will make it to the Hall of Fame or Heisman Trophy candidates with those kind of numbers. The bottom line is to try to get a win, and Tech was able to sustain some offense. All right, what should we look for from BC since they are going to get the ball here, the opening uh, kickoff of the second half? Well, it comes back to the original. Plan that is to establish a run. The defense has been splendid, and you're going to have to not get as conservative offensively. You're just going to have to hope you can get some receivers open downfield and make things happen. As for Tech, business as usual offensively. Maurice DeShazo showed he was a tough guy. Was able to come back after an injury. They ran some option. I thought that was key. And if he can get the ball in Freeman's hands, boy, Tech can be awesome. Dan Henning. The offensive unit for BC will get the ball coming up in a couple of minutes. Coaching staff in the sideline for Virginia Tech and Penn State. Could it get much easier than that? It's not even halftime yet. 45 zip. Virginia over Clemson. Low scoring game. Ohio State holding off Pitt. That was a blowout last year at Pittsburgh. Auburn trailing to LSU and good news for Curly Holman the LSU coach he needs a lot of wins this year North Carolina leading to lane check the scoreboard we'll have more for you a little bit later Adam Larson will kick off for Virginia Tech one for three field goals this afternoon and that's where we are right now three nothing Virginia Tech. Sean Scales will hold for Adel Larson. And here we go. Second half action Virginia Tech at Boston College. A short return. Number two Tony Ransom will bring it back. Gets the corner to the sideline and out of bounds at the 33 yard line. Ken Oxidine number 28 makes the tackle for Virginia Tech. So Jeff Ryan has been lifted and they will go with Scott Utrin. And Scott is a freshman quarterback from St. Ignatius High School. And he is a big time quarterback out of the Cleveland, Ohio area, Middleburg Heights, Ohio. Getting his first varsity action. Rice in motion. Hands off to David Green, and he's stuffed, picks up a couple. Everybody involved on that. Kenny, make that uh, Cornell Brown, number 58, looked like he might have jammed his wrist on that play. Greg Landry with a pretty decent block. The thing you want to do on this, Dave, is just get started properly. This is your third quarterback in less than really, you know, two quarters, so you want a settling effect on the offense. Happy fans, and is it truly the 47th for Jan? Happy birthday <laughs> from everybody. Scott Newtrick to throw under pressure. Hangs it up and throws a duck. Will it be picked? Yarbrough's got it. He does at the 42 yard line. Third time Virginia Tech has made an interception this afternoon. The intended receiver, Grace, and it's the second INT for William Yarbrough. Well, Dan Henning must have a whirl of confidence in this young man to bring him out and on his first pass attempt, have him go deep. See, the protection was decent, but he's throwing off his back foot. He's off balance. He throws a duck, and Yarborough, again, a good retriever, makes the grab. Balls at the Tech 42 yard line. 
DC deferred to the second half and it didn't work out. The Shazo blocked from Edmonds. The Shazo downfield picks up about five, run out of bounds at the Tech sideline. Oh, he's seen number 57, Matt Half, claiming that Brian Edmonds had too much a hold of him. That is a tough block for Edmonds to try to hold on on half, and it looked like DeShazer was walking back like Festus. You know, Joe <laughs> Gunsmoke, I mean, the guy had... <laughs> Picked up three yards in the play, so second down and seven. Three-nothing, Virginia Tech. We're just underway here in the third period. Dave Sims and Doc Walker with you on the Big East Football Conference Television Network. Shays a quick drop. Tight end almost picked off. He was going for Martin. The dive by number 44. That's yeah, Daryl Porter. Porter. That's exactly what Jim Reed's defense needed. Then again, DeShazo trying to go back to the money ball player. In this case, Kevin Martin has been his go-to guy. That ball's right on the shoelace, right on the turf, and then it's out. So DeShazo. Needs to come up big here. It's third down and seven. He sends Holmes and Freeman to the top of your screen. Long count out of the gun. Steps up. Completes it to Holmes. It'll be short of a first down. He's in BC territory at the 49, but it looks like it'll be a yard short. Stephen Boyd and Daryl Porter there for Boston College. Boy, Porter, what a tackle. I mean, you, again, you got to have presence of mind to know where the yard markers are. This time, two receiver side, pretty decent release. Boyd there with the underneath coverage, and here's the play. Really impressive. This young man has done so much. Boyd's already my player of the game. It's still early. <laughs> Daryl Porter with a big play. Michael Reed deep to receive the punt from Robbie Colley. It has not been a great offensive performance by Virginia Tech, which came in averaging 409 yards a game. Got too much of it, and it goes into the end zone. Robbie and Kelly boom that one. 49 yards, no return. BC will take over at its own 20. 13.08 to go in the third. We'll, we're back after these messages. Having some fun here, BC. But the Eagles trail 3-0, 1308 to go third quarter. Been a tough afternoon for the Boston College quarterbacks. Four for 15, three interceptions. Third quarterback of the day, the freshman, Scott Dutry. Out of St. Ignatius High School, Middleburg Heights, Ohio. Last ball thrown was an interception. But this time the Clarence counted a big play, and he fumbles. Let's see, they're going to rule it down at the 48-yard line. So a 28-yard pickup. Neutron to Clarence Cannon. Larry Green makes the tackle for Virginia Tech. All I can see is Dan Henning knows a heck of a lot more about his personnel than we do, and this kid has the markings of a blue chipper. Again, not the tight spiral. The ball is up for play. Receiver makes a good decision in playing the football. Best play of the afternoon so far for BC. Green squirms through, picks up a couple. The blitz and Ken Brown ran right past him. Cornell Brown, number 58, tackles him. Boy, Brown guys, bruisers. You know, Ken has had a pretty good job stunting throughout the first half, and they, what they want to do is create havoc. And again, good job by Green to make the first guy miss and get north-south. Second down and eight for BC. Mark Hartzell, the starting quarterback, dislocated ring finger. Jeff Ryan ineffective, and now Scott Mugin, the freshman. They blitz him. They bring, they bring the whole package, and Larry Green from the corner was there with George Del Rico. Del Rico stood him up and finished off by Green. One thing he's going to have to understand is you got to hold that ball down. You can't have that ball extended when you're going up against a blitzing defense. This is a total collapse. They crushed the pocket, and he's just got to get that ball away. And he'll learn that in time. It's very difficult for a freshman, but that's one you want to toss up here, up to the booth. First sack all year allowed by BC. Freshman looking at a third and 14. Ball's back at the 43-yard line of BC. 
trying to draw nothing doing nothing doing on that one Ken Brown is there he had help from Hank Coleman number six boy he played that well good fundamentals you know it's one thing to stumble into big plays there's another to to have it work into it by design and that's one thing I will, I will credit Phil O'Mation and this group from Virginia Tech they have been at the right spot all day long fourth and long the punt by Beckley spiraling job taken by Freeman gets across the 25 to the 26 yard line tackled by Daryl Porter number 44 punt of 37 yards a return of just seven Three nothing Virginia Tech here in the third period will return to Alumni Stadium after these words from our local stations. It's a steamy day in Boston. Virginia Tech leading Boston College three nothing. We're at the Heights in Chestnut Hill. Dave Sims and Doc Walker. And not the offensive shootout we anticipated. These two teams combined for 1,126 total yards last year. It has not been the same this year. Virginia Tech's defense has been marvelous. And a struggle by the offense of BC. Thomas, not too far. Mike Mamola, 59 involved, along with Eric Shorter. Now I got to give a lot of credit to Daryl Porter once again for coming up with a real good four. It's his first start. You know, Joe Kamara quit the squad. He's gone. This kid steps right in, and I like him. He's a physical corner. Come a gain of one, so second and nine at the 27. Two wideouts, top of your screen for Virginia Tech, Freeman and Cornelius White. Run the option, try to pitch. Great play by number 99, Stalin Cullinet, out of the South Bronx, Cardinal Hayes High School in New York. Well, Stalin was pretty active against the Wolverines with a couple of sacks. Real spirited guy. I mean, he can play at 6'6", but when you got that, that long body, look, he's watching, he's reading it all the way. And he doesn't get faked. And more importantly, he brings him down. Missed tackles. It really was a difficult situation for BC against Michigan. This is one that you can tell that the week off, the bye week, double days for three straight days, and it paid off. Third and long situation for Tech. White. Freeman to the top of your screen. And penalty flag. They have taken too much time. Dead ball. All star. Offense. Same problems that played BC back in the first half. Mistakes, mistakes, penalties, penalties. They're marching backwards. Give that defense some credit, Dave. Both sides, they have defense. forced things. That they have, no doubt about it. Balls at the 17-yard line, third and long. Boy, you see him coming up close, play pocket seven. Dwayne Thomas, couple of yards, not much, punting situation. Kalanet makes the play again, number 99 for BC. But defensively, both clubs are doing a great job today. Only a 48-yard field goal by Adam Larson. The difference, 3 nothing Tech. <laughs> hey, Dave. I didn't know you had t-shirts, huh? <laughs> I remember him. <laughs> nyuk, nyuk, nyuk. Fourth and long. Collie. Angle punt. Kenyatta Watson. Back to the 36. Got some room and into Tech territory at the 49-yard line. It's a 42-yard punt by that man, Robbie Colley. 13-yard return. BC looking to get on track on offense. They'll try to do it when we get back after these messages. Trying to work things out for the offense and the defense on the sideline. BC trailing 3-0. Screaming Eagle has yet to soar. Best starting spot so far. Coming up right now, first and 10 at the Tech 49. Dave Sims and Doc Walker with you. And if you're just joining us, the starting quarterback, Mark Hartzell for BC, knocked out with a dislocated ring finger. He will not return. Third quarterback of the day, Scott Mutrin. Hands off to David Green. Gets into the secondary. Number 21, Brandon Simonis makes the tackle. Greg Landry sprung him. 
Well, this is a good opportunity for the running backs to pick it up, and they've got pretty good production so far out of Green, out of Smith, and out of Comer. And these guys, if they can just take some of the burden, you know, off the young freshman quarterback, then I think this Boston College offense may get in the position to put some points on the board. Green, 31, 31 yards on 14 carries. Picks it up, loose ball. Neutron had it, and then Gordon Laro recovers for Boston College. Boy, there's some good hitting going on in there. That ball popped loose. Let's see who knocked it loose here, Rick. Yeah, we've had some good knocking all day long. Isolation, dive play, just no penetration. See, you get whipped on the, you get whipped early on the line of scrimmage. You just don't have a shot. Del Rico, who else? I mean, he's sticking to Rydell, and again, this guy's a stud. He is an outstanding football player. Third and long. Neutron to throw. Over the middle, Bryce's hand. Pop ball, loose ball, Tony Gray. He's got ball side rods. He's to the 40, to the 30, 20. He's going to go in and score. Tony Gray, touchdown, 65 yards for Virginia Tech. No flags. That is his third interception on this young season. And when we look back at the box scores, we'll think, oh, the young quarterback comes in and is not smart with the football. In fact, that's a tip. Well, Tech didn't need that. I mean, they're too good on defense. <laughs> and all sideline. Never touched. Officially 66 yards on the INT return by Torian Gray. Gray, a sophomore out of Lakeland, Florida. Adel Larson for the point after. Low snap, bad snap. This is how Ryan Williams got hurt last week. They can return this for a deuce. But he stopped number 17, Reed, Michael Reed. But the snap was poorly done. Billy Connady had a bad day. A bad snap on that one. The touchdown stands to point after. Well, Beamer is ripped. no good, and Frank Beamer upset, but his club leads it by the score of 9 0 with 6.52 to go in the third period. We're back after these messages. Here's the Virginia Tech hero at the moment, a very popular man indeed down in Virginia after his interception return for six. Well, the eyes tell a lot, and this one is one right in the hands, pops out, and I hate to put it on the quarterback. They take it too bad on that. This is on, on Greasy. The guy just lets the ball get away. Torian Gray has nothing more to do than hit the end zone for a score. Boy, a guy knows what to do with the football. Tended receiver was Greg Gray, Doc. Well, it's everything's pressure. Pressure is everything. The other pocket somewhat collapses, but the ball got off. I mean, it really wasn't on the quarterback or the offensive line, to be honest with you. Just a, just a blown opportunity. Waverly Jackson with the pressure and the knockdown. Frank Beamer's got to be upset. He lost the kicker last week on a blown point after touchdown with a dislocated shoulder. And there's the holder, John Shields. He couldn't come up with the bad snap. But nonetheless, this is how Tech scored. 66 yards on the interception return. It's 9-0 Tech. The nightmare continues, Doc, for BC quarterbacks. They are now combined 5 for 17, 64 yards, and four picks. And still in the football game. Very much so. That's is that amazing? News. That is the good news. You got to make a play, though. I don't care if you've got the monsters of the midway playing defense for you. Eventually, you wear down psychologically. You know, you start to second guessing what's going on. You get disappointed. You're playing in front of a home crowd. You know, a new ballpark, and you just get down on yourself. Be interesting to see what Henning does the quarterback spot. Jeff Ryan just put his hat back on to so the we get Ryan back into football game. Kenyatta Watson from his own five runs into his own men, and then is finally brought down by Virginia Tech's number 37, Keith Moyer. So let's see who comes in at quarterback for Dan Henning. We will send in Jeff Ryan. 
Tough break on Mutrin too, because here's a kid who led his club to 28 and no back-to-back -back state titles. So, and only threw 13 interceptions to 42 touchdown passes. So this young man understands how to throw the football, but that's how it goes sometimes. Mutrin picked off twice. Back now to Jeff Ryan. Ball at the 20. Jimmy Tech leading 9-0. Good time for Ryan. Hangs it out there and overthrows number 27. Clarence Cannon, terrific pressure by Jim Barron. He was right in the face of Jeff Ryan and really laid a lick on him. So this is a deal that Virginia Tech is so noted for. Somebody is going to get a free run or they're going to collapse the pocket and get after you. This time, boy, Barron just comes in and gets a hand up. Then you get a hand on the side of the helmet. Then you follow through and you push him down to the ground. All these little things just mount and build up to add that element of intimidation. Jim Brown uh, Barron came into the game with seven quarterback pressures. There are the numbers on BC quarterbacks. They should be looking for at some point Pete Mitchell, but they can't do it. Penalty flag on the play. Del Rico with the stick. Holding offense. That's what pressure does, Dave. It forces you to grab and cheat because you're out of position. Holding offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. And why not? It'll bring up a third down and 10 situation from the 20. You know, we talked a lot about the shootout, but let's be honest. This is billed as two great linebackers with Del Rico and what he's been able to do, Stephen Boyd, obviously two Butkus candidates. You know, we got to give these guys some credit on the opposite side of the ball. Absolutely. Kenny Brown's been involved in Virginia Tech defense mauled last year by BC. It's not happening this time around. Third and 10 at the 20. 9 nothing Tech. Ryan steps up. Throws. Good catch at about the 26 by Green. Coverage by Del Rico. But that will not be enough for a first down. And will force yet another punting situation. And there's a few thousand Tech fans that made the trip up here from Blacksburg. Appreciative of their defense's effort. Well, this, is, this is an outstanding yeah. showing so far, and, and especially when you couple the fact that Tech has to turn right around and play Thursday night against West Virginia. Seventh punt for Jeff Beckley. High spiral drives Freeman back to the 28. Got a wall. Knocked out of bounds at the 41. Good coverage for Boston College. 46-yard punt, return of 12. Baron Spinner with a big block. That is his second KO of the afternoon. A young man, a freshman out of Bedford, Virginia. They look for from Jashizo at this point up 9-0 with 5.29 to go, third period. Protect the football. You know, Try to you grind it, to, right? Yeah, well, you don't want to give them anything cheap. They've not been too good in terms of execution on the option. But you don't want to lose your aggression. You want to continue to press offensively so that you can knock them out of the box. Balls at the 40 for Tech, first and 10. Throw it, flanker screen, Holmes with room. 40, 45 to the 49 yard line, knocked out of bounds by Porter. That's exactly what I mean. You, know, you don't get conservative. You know, you keep the pressure on, yeah. keep them off balance. Uh, you're not going to run the football well on them anyway. So you want to try to keep them off balance to see if you can get a. I'd look for a trick play at this point. A reverse. Oh, maybe. yeah. Do anything. A double pass, a screen, a throw. And, and you just really take the confidence away from the Eagles. Renal White and Tommy Edwards in the backfield. Second and one at midfield. Drop ball, he's got to pick up the first down. How about this, a big play by DeShazo. He's across the 45 to the 43-yard line, first down Tech. Brian May was there. Brian he May had there. him and yeah, missed him. Yeah, he had him. One of the things we mentioned in the open, you must tackle DeShazo. There you have, there's your opportunity. If the Eagles can capitalize on this, they're in the game, but they don't. Then you got an arm tackle, and it won't cut it. You will not bring DeShazo down unless you put a Rydell right in his tummy. Busted play picks up a first down. Your BC start to shake your head right now. Down now, 9-0, 430 to go. Yeah, but you're still in this. Balls at the BC 43. 
nothing. Shazo, play action. Gets out of trouble. Throws it. And incomplete to number 17, intended for Brian Still. Boy, Chris Malone put a big block. He allowed the Shazo to get on the edge. Didn't throw it well. You know, sometimes a kid gets a big hit and he comes back, but he did he loses some of his some of his throwing motion. Ohio State holding off Pitt at halftime, 14-3, a market change from a year ago. Maryland on top of West Virginia. That game has been over for a long time. <laughs> the Lions are they are legit this season. Clemson trailing in ACC action. DeShazo 11 for 22, 137 yards. Balls at the 43 of Boston College. Edwards in motion. Draw. Renault White. Lot of room. 40, 35. First down. Virginia Tech. Good call. Boy, that was an excellent decision. Renault White picks up 11 yards. Gary Tranquil once again in his first season. He was with the Browns. That exchange a little shaky. But good call with the draw. And you're looking for where's Boyd? Well, Boyd's on covering Martin, the tight end, which was a pretty good idea. They've gone to Martin so so much in this football game. Good looking drive by Tech. First and ten mm -hmm. at the 32 of BC. Tommy Edwards breaks a couple of tackles. He's inside the 30 to the 28, brought down by Chris 93. Uh, you start to watch some of the Eagles get up a little slow and they put the hands on the hips. It starts to wear on you. It's a hot, it's a humid day. You have some 280, 90 pound pounders, you know, kind of leaning on you, and they're running the football, and it, it just it, it starts to become a factor. Kickoff uh, time, humidity was 85 percent. It may be worse now. Second and six. Option. Oh, what a pitch! Touchdown, Tommy Edwards got it. What a pop on the sideline. He picks up close to a first down. Stephen Boyd. Got DeShazo, but what a pitch by the quarterback, Maurice DeShazo, number 12. That is a human highlight. That's one of those clips that will make the Virginia Tech highlight film, and you might watch it all across the country at 11. Here, DeShazo, once again, up against Boyd, and this is tops on tops, and he gets it off. A remarkable effort to be accurate with the football and get a good game. Third and short. Boyd was there. See, I like him. The guy keeps his shoulder square. He gets up. He thinks, hey, I got you. And then you look at him and say, oh, no, I don't. They need to get to the 22-yard line. They're inches away. Edwards in motion. Shizzo follows his left guard, Chris Malone. He gets the first down. Drive continues for Tech. Virginia Tech, 18th in the country this week, 2-0. They're the 1994 Independence Bowl champions. They really mauled Indiana. He took no prisoners that day. And you talk a lot about uh, about Malone and his 25th start, but this offensive line was really a question mark prior to today's kickoff. They, sure they responded. Frank Beamer was uh, dissatisfied with what happened last week, given some of the turnovers, and they just did not get out and get rolling early. So he said, hey, a lot of, some things going to be decided in practice. They're really getting it done today. T.J. Washington at right tackle for Tech, and this drive continues from the 22. Tommy Edwards, big hole, powers ahead. He's inside the 20. Nothing flashy. But you're going to get hit when you play this ball club. Well, they're flashing time, though. Yep. You know, and as you start to maul your opponent, you take time off the clock. And, and that's the difficult part. What Boston College needs at this point is a turnover. See, they need a fumble. They need, a, they need an interception. They've got to force the issue. Hokies came in with a turnover ratio of minus five. Well, they've improved on that today. They've picked off BC four times. White coming into motion. Bottom of his screen. Here comes a reverse. Half was there. White keeps his feet. Can't get out of bounds. Boyd finishes him off. Mamula got a piece, too. Cornelius White. Good call, Doc. That we're looking a for a play. trick play. Yeah. Waiting on the trick play. And then you have it. But what team? That's scheme defense. You got some guys a little, they're down right now. Mamula. See, if people just play the responsibilities of the defense, you're going to be in good shape. That's a great effort to get out of the tackle, but watch. See, there you see those gold hats. They're in pursuit, and guess who? There's Stephen Boyd. This guy, he's special. Got to like the speed of Mamula, Boyd, and Half. Half started the play. He almost had White in the backfield. You know, you don't have to have great speed if you play within the confines of the scheme, and that was a great example. Balls at the 25, third and 13. Wayne Thomas back in the game. 
Antonio Freeman in motion. Draw Thomas. Big hole. 20. Big hit. He's down to about the 17 yard line. This is chess game now. Gary Tranquil, offensive coordinator, going up against Jim Reed, defensive coordinator of BC. This is a two man game now. Two man football. Stephen Boyd going up against Dwayne Thomas. Look at that exchange. But they're lucky. Sometimes that helps. Boyd was on the blitz. He's out of position. And Thomas crams it in for pretty good yardage. 14 rushes, 41 yards. Numbers down for Thomas, but he's been somewhat effective. 35 yard field goal attempt. Call it a 34 from the right hash. A 34 yard attempt by Adel Larson. High snap, handled well. Kick is up. And it's good. So Adel Larson and a nice hold by John Shields, number 87. Tax on three more. Larson two for four in the afternoon. It's now 12 nothing Virginia Tech. So they get points out of that drive. Well, that's that's good. I mean, you want you want six, and I have to give BC a lot of credit for holding them. But you remember the look on John Shields' face when he walked on the sideline. <laughs> Frank right. Beamer was livid. Well, that kid came in, made made a good catch on that, and allowed them to get the field goal. <laughs> you know, when you're 18, 19 years old. It's, it can be kind of intimidating going on the sideline and a grown man screaming and hollering and spitting and shouting at you. Yeah, it can get you down a little bit. <laughs> Coach is trying to make a living, and Frank's got a unique situation. He's got to deal with Virginia Tech. If I win six or more this year, I get a five-year contract. Well, I guarantee you there's a little pressure on him. Dan heading back on the college scene, and here's the, the play made here by Shields. Watch Shields, see? Good hands. Now you want to spin it, let it down, get that offhand out of the way. Good kick. No body movement on that play. And here we go. There's the what other side of the story. You bet. Uh, that's the thing about coaches. They don't hold a grudge. And John Shields does not have to walk back to Blacksburg. Exactly. Well, the good ones don't. You know, you just, they judge you by every play. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about playing ball, you, you can't be sensitive. No. You got thin skin, you better pick another profession. Amen. <laughs> that's the truth. Because some of the things your best friends call you in it, a it's, heartbeat. It's brutal. It really is. Oh, yeah, right to your face and often, too. It's worse than TV. <laughs> Rick Walker making a comic debut today. Nicely done. Here's the kickoff. 12 nothing Virginia Tech. BC needs some answers. Tony Ransom gets hit, and our sound is really bringing it into your living room. These folks are hit. Tackle made by Marcus Parker. Jeff Ryan gets a chance to make it happen. Well, this, this, this is BC's 13th possession coming up. They picked up only three first downs. And the crowd letting them know about it. Actually, there's a, there's a little problem in the stands. They take that back. It's nothing to do with the offense. But well, they need the crowd behind them. This is a good time where fans can really become the 12th man. Pete Mitchell, been silent. They want to see the ball in the air, but don't forget, BC's been picked four times. Green with the carry, brought down by Torian Gray. This is just an unbelievable turnaround from last year when these two teams met. Well, it's just, you know, defense. Give uh, give a defense some credit. I think all of us, uh, we, we just tend to talk a little bit more about offense, and we do like the excitement, but this has been a, an excellent ball game on the defensive oh, side. Oh, without a doubt. And you talk about one guy who's been waiting for this day is Phil O'Mation. Yeah. The defensive coordinator for Tech and Kenny Brown, to say the least. I mean, I don't even usually like defensive people, but I have to give them respect. <laughs> Ryan play action. Going for Cannon. Cannon's there. Makes the catch out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That's a first down for Boston College. Larry Green on the coverage. My, my, my. You know, sometimes it can look so simple. You know, you get a nice protection. Here's a quarterback somewhat fueling his way out. A little play action fake. Holds the linebackers. Nice little throw. Come back to it. Keep the feet in. Nice. Confidence builder. Jeff Ryan needed it. Ryan, three for six, 38 yards. No interceptions to this point. Anthony Coleman, the deep back down for PC. Clock at 14 seconds to go, third period. They run the draw. You hear everybody calling it. Comer went nowhere. <laughs> J.C. Price for Tech. Help from Kenny Brown. 
Yeah, it's a tough call. Tough call on a, on a draw. Three quarters complete. And the defense of Virginia Tech doing a super job. Okies lead at 12 0 over Dan Henning's BC Eagles. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after these words from our local stations. Festive crowd as the big day continues. Rededication of Alumni Stadium, which has been expanded to 44,500 here on the campus of Boston College. Dave Sims and Doc Walker and a Big East crew with you. 12 0 Tech as we start the fourth quarter. Second down and 11 from the BC 44. Oh, Jeff Ryan sending everybody out. Knocked down, almost picked off. Hank Coleman knocked it down, second one today that Hank is knocked down. He had a receiver running clear, right? Well, it doesn't surprise me. It really doesn't. They've not had a lot of luck on offense. And, and sometimes, no matter how good you are, it helps to have something break your way. You know, Henning lost his starting quarterback, brought in his highly sought after freshman who didn't really do a bad job. He got credit for two picks, and now he's fighting his guts out with Ryan, and he still have a chance to to be competitive. Third down and 11, Bryce in motion. Balls at the DC 44. Big pressure, throw by Ryan. There's a little outside of Clarence Cannon, the intended receiver, and Waverly Jackson got some good pressure on Jeff Ryan. Boy, Waverly Jackson's having a banner day. He's applied a lot of pressure. To good work out of the tackles. Here we watch the All-American candidate, in my mind, probably the best tight end in the country. Double coverage here. You have Del Rio on him. You have Kenny Brown, who's been shadowing him, and they've virtually taken him out of the offense. BC is now one for 11 on third down situations. Tells you a lot about the quality of play in the Big East. You have Michigan. Uh, Pete caught 10 balls against them, and, and really BC had a fine showing. They go out, they beat Notre Dame the next week, and now we're in a tough game here at BC. Eighth punt for Buckley. Freeman, fair catches at the 13 yard line. 43 yard punt for Jeff Beckley. Third quarter stats, Doc Walker, the turnover still looming large, as well as that time of possession. Yeah, it is, it is ugly. We can we can put all of our attention on four turnovers. It would definitely change the game. Uh, passing yardage 135 to 84 and BC is a school that that lives on its wings. And so that's unfortunate. But uh, again, I look at the score. I'm a bottom line kind of guy. And the way I look at it, they still have an opportunity to do something if they can force a turnover or score an offense. Tech takes over with 1449 to go in the ball game up 12 nothing. Thomas to the corner and room. What a room. First down as he's hit hard at the 27 yard line. Porter finally brought him down and he was sprung by Chris Malone, the left guard. <laughs> I don't know how hard, if he was hit hard, I think he hit Clifford hard. I mean, you've been waiting on this all day long. You miss a tackle, boy, can't get to it. He turns up. Oh, yeah, Clifford and lost then, that yeah, one. See, Clifford is on the receiving end of that tattoo. Time you see that defender going backwards. Guess who won? First and ten. Ball at the 30. Thomas finds a hole again. Holds on to the ball and knocked down at the 35. Just underway, third period. Ohio Stadium, the Buckeyes holding off the Panthers. 17-10, Maryland over West Virginia. I heard somebody say Antonio be smart. Antonio Freeman was joined with number 44, Darrell Porter, at the end of that last play. Thomas gets the carry. And jammed up nicely. Good defensive play. By number 57, that's Matt Half. Yeah, he, he, missed, a, he missed a hole on that one, though. You know, Mamula has really been Holding playing well. Office. This time, I think they want to take advantage of Mamula, who was rushing up field hard. Yeah, it's a pretty good standoff. Yeah, I give that to Mamula on that. And you get those gold hats over. I still believe that uh, Thomas missed a hole. He had a real nice block on the inside by Chris Malone, but he didn't follow him. 
It will remain. The run, holding offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. Kind of hard to imagine, Dave Sims, as you mentioned, 48 to 34, the score last year. You promised me, oh man, it's going to be all this scoring, <laughs> these calls. I know not to trust you anymore. Third and 13. <laughs> Make that second and 13. Remain second down off that penalty. I'm telling you, Phil Elmation's got the biggest smile from anybody in the state of Virginia right now. Oh, yeah. That's a coordinator for Tech. Shea's up, quarterback draw. At this time, Chris Sullivan, number 93, is there to make the tackle. Sullivan played that well. Morabito, Sullivan. The play of the tackles has been extraordinary today on both sides of the ball. That is usually the toughest position to get production out of on any level, but not today. You can beat your guy at the point of attack and work yourself around and get a hold of your Shazo. Please, please, please. Tech just suffered an injury. Jay Haygood, a tackle, left the game. T.J. Washington came back into the tackles now of Bianchi, number 77, and T.J. Washington. The guards Malone and McMahon, Conaty, the center. They've been rotating uh, T.J. in a lot today, so that won't that won't hurt them. Out of the gun, third and long. Deshazo, Cox throws, and still at the 40, and under throw him. And that, even if he catches, might have been, you know, give or take an inch or two of a first down. Would have been tough, but once again, Chris Sullivan in for a hit. Well, that defensive line of the Eagles, and this crowd should give him a hand. They have really played good on defense. They're going to win some ball games, Dave. They are going to win some ball games. They got to get some help in the quarterback spot now, but I can feel it. Bryce penalty ran into Collins. The 42-yard line. Kenyatta, this all going for naught. A big stop by number 85 on the tackle, Matt Morell for Virginia Tech. Greg Rice, who had a super day when we were here, Temple at BC, and there was three consecutive block punts by BC. Grice had two of them. You know, it's a technique. It's a knack. There are, there are just some guys that, that understand how to do it. First down. Number 20. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, receiving team, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, the Virginia Tech offense back on the field. Here's why. Yeah, it's all aiming point. Poor aiming point. You've got to imagine where that ball will be kicked right off the foot. There's an imaginary mark. And you've got to visualize that and get your fanny to that spot. If not, you end up running into the kicker and you hurt your football team. Tech resumes possession, 12.33 to go. And BC being shut out right now. And BC has not been shut out since 1980 when Navy did it to them. 21 nothing. What's interesting is that this is really be, Virginia Tech has not won two straight regular season games in the road since 1986. Give to. Dwayne Thomas, not much doing there. Morabito grabbed an ankle and held on. I thought this was interesting, too, given the up-and-down nature of Tech over the last few years. The last time they opened up 3-0 and in a season was 81. They won the first four games that year to finish 7-4. and four. You get a renewed spirit. Those guys, they're wearing that Independence Bowl ring with pride. And, you know, it's a good thing to pass that down. You want another one. Edmonds grunts his way to maybe the 40. Mola on the tackle. And the defense of BC has had a lot of clock time this afternoon. Well, more clock time than you, than you ever want. And there is really a, a, a testament for the kind of conditioning that they're in. Once again, they had a bye week. They went to two a days for three straight days. And uh, Jim Reed and his group there, you see Dan Henning. These guys, uh, they won't admit it. They'll be down, you know, should they end up on the short end of the stick. But defensively, when you go to those meetings come Sunday and Monday, those guys can walk in with their chests really stuck out. Virginia Tech came into the game today in its first two games against Arkansas State and Southern Miss, giving up only 160.5 yards in those two ball games. 
Haven't given up much today. Third and eight. Shazo. They bring everybody. He steps out and down he goes. Stephen Boyd brings him down. The pressure by Tim Morabito to start the play. Six sacks now for BC. Well, that's what it's all about, team pressure. And Boyd on somewhat of a delayed blitz, which then allowed him to get a good look at the, at the, the, the angles or the lanes, if you will. Mamula rushing upfield, presented himself, and he stops it. Bryce doesn't go for the punt. Collie hangs one high. Fair catch, signal four, made by Kenyatta Watson at the 28-yard line. 39-yard punt. We've got 11 one to go here in the ball game. Virginia Tech enjoying a 12-0 lead. We're back after these messages. Great to have you back with us, Dave Sims and Doc Walker. Biggie's football conference game of the week. Virginia Tech 12-0 over BC. Time's starting to run out, but in 11 minutes, I've seen a lot of wacky things in college football. But Virginia Tech has done a great job in holding down BC only 130 yards total offense for Boston College this afternoon. And the Eagles had 503 at Michigan two weeks ago. Jeff Ryan, the quarterback. Going long, sideline, Yarbrough covering. Yarbrough almost had his third interception of the afternoon. Greg Rice, the intended receiver. Yarbrough has played a fine game. And he really has, but what's, un what's unfortunate is that the offensive line gives them great protection. So you, maybe you want to drop down and take a higher, higher percentage pass. You, you go for the, for the money, nice spiral, good pass, but to the wrong guy. Cloud covers. Pretty comprehensive right now, just muggy. Three wide outs for Boston College. Second and 10. The BC 29. Ryan over the middle. And Yana Watson with running room. First down 40, 45, 50. Finally dragged down. And knocked out of bounds by George Del Rico, the linebacker. Big play, Kenyatta Watson from Jeff Ryan. It covers 24 yards. There you go. Here's a guy with 4-4 with four, four speed in the 40-yard dash. And this is what I was alluding to. You know, a high percentage pass. Take the short one run underneath and see if you can turn a, a short toss into a long run. Ball at the Virginia Tech 49 yard line. Clock running at 10.30. I'm gonna throw again. Blitz, Brown there, Brown got him. Kenny Brown, boy he's been shooting gaps all day. He's come up with air a few times, but not this time. Boy, that young man out of Richmond, Virginia, is really going to go out special in his senior year. He is a guy, this time they've got a little game, a little outside by the end, inside by the backer, got a clear throwing lane, and you'd like to see a quarterback get rid of the football or tuck it away. And it's, you know, it's real easy for us to sit in the booth and say what you should do, but that's winning football. You just can't have a good play followed by a bad play. Sands on the defense's favor now, second and 22 at the BC 39. Looking, overthrowing, almost picked off by number eight, Tony Morrison, the linebacker. Yeah. You know, it's just Russian roulette football at this point. You don't know what's going to happen. You just crank it up and hope there's not a bullet in the chamber. That's not sound. And again, I, keep, I think about Pete Mitchell. I understand he's being double covered, but that means somebody else should be able to come underneath. Good pass pro that time. And, and this is just, it's just thrown out there. Ugly numbers for BC and Virginia Tech not considerably better. But BC has a 12, Virginia Tech has a 12 nothing lead. Good pressure, Barron chasing Ryan. Ryan throws, Ryan incomplete, any penalty flags? Oh about boy, 40, away with one. About 40,000 referees say so, but the guy who makes a difference says no. Yarborough with the coverage. That was close. Ryan showed great athletic ability on that play. Got a little help from his offensive line. And then it looks like he has a nice finish to this. Kind of looks like Steve Young with that eight on his back, doesn't he? He throws, there's some contact, balls there. You know, at that point, the guys in stripe have to make a decision on whether or not that pass 
could be caught. And if they think it couldn't, then you don't get a flag. Freeman lets it roll. He may pay for it. It's in the end zone. Freeman got a break. Tech will take over at its 20 after a 61-yard punt by Jeff Beckley. 12-0 Virginia Tech will return to Alumni Stadium after these words from our local stations. It is that hot here at Alumni Stadium. So they got the fans and everything on this, both sidelines. We started at about 82 degrees. It must be at least 10 degrees hotter, or so it seems. Worse than that in the booth. Where's our fan at? <laughs> Shizo, play action. Under pressure, gets out of trouble, throws, got the tight end, dropped it this ball, tip ball, BC Oh, he dropped it. They wipe it off. Rupert English, number 24, had the pot of gold right in his hands. Could not pull it off. And he's a former fullback. He's supposed to be one of the good hands people. Well, he wasn't on that play. Had two shots at it. That's right, two shots. Goodness gracious. You just have the idea sooner or later something good will happen for this defense. See, there he's got it. Now he's thinking. Now he's looking upfield. Hey, man, you got to get your eyes on that ball. Second and 10 at the 20. Tommy Edwards, the deep back in the eye. He gets the ball. Squirts through the left side. DeShazo has, has really shown some courage, but he is hurting. I mean, this guy, he's, he's limping as he gets back to the huddle. They've got a quick turnaround, and it's... Uh... Here's where DeShazo took a hit here, Rick. Well, you watch this. This is one to play before. He kind of gets out of the pocket. See, he gets stuck on the turf, and there he throws, and you know, just little things like that. Now he's got that little Festus walk again. Oh, Twist the knee. Yeah. Trying to get out of the way. Third and eight. Ball at the 22, 12-0 Virginia Tech. Short completion. Holmes to the 30. Stays in bounds. Good move. Stands another yard. He's to the 32-yard line. Clock stays alive at 8:20 at County. That's smart football. It really is. You know, receivers that can really have an impact on the game. You stay in bounds. You, you do the toe tap. You keep the ball in bounds when the clock is running, and you have a lead. And little things like that it makes me know the guys spend time in the classroom. They come into a football game prepared, and it pays off. Nice play by Jermaine Holmes. Picks up the first down. Jermaine, a junior out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Frank Beamer's club continues to roll up some yardage. Four catches, 34 yards for Holmes on the day. Ball at the 32. Make that Edwards outside kick team. DeShazo throws and too high to number 17, Brian Still. Yeah, that was tough. Terry Strzok does a good job coaching, coaching these wide receivers. He's got a lot of talent. Joe Paterno's called off the dogs in the fourth period. Six nothing. Cavaliers and what has happened to Clemson Ohio State now starting to put it on Pittsburgh we'll see Pittsburgh next week against BC LSU trying to hold off number 11 Auburn Maryland and West Virginia another border war this is a game out in the whack Virginia Tech on top second down and 10 from the 32 Tommy Edwards cuts back right into Stephen Boyd Boy, Brian Edmond, he really does the dirty work for Tech's offense. That time he had a real nice block. You know, every good offense has a guy like Edmonds. He's an unselfish warrior, about 235 pounds, that doesn't mind blocking, will get you the hard yard. I mean, just a complete football player. Damian McMahon just limped off the field for Tech, their right guard. Jared Hamlin, number 66, has replaced him. Third down and eight at the 34. Screen. Edwards, great catch, but the play's dead at the 31. Bad throw by DeShazo. Yeah, it was. He had a, he had a few white shirts in front. That may have been a pretty good football play. He had Connedy, Malone, and number 66, Hamlin, all out in front. He had the blockers. Well, these are smart football fans. They appreciate good defense. You know, this doesn't always happen. Nice high kick by Robbie Colley. At the 31, the fair catch by Kenyatta Watson. 
busy day for the punters to say the least. 6.47 to go here at Alumni Stadium after that 38 yard punt. 12 nothing Virginia Tech will return after these messages. A good look at the enclosed now in the lower deck Alumni Stadium. Big East open today rededication of this ballpark and then last week we saw the official Big East opening of the new Rutgers Stadium. New facilities around the Big East. What helps you recruit? It really oh. does, man. No question. From the 30, here's Jeff Ryan. Same pass. He had a big completion, a 24-yarder to Watson. It didn't work this time. But they were close, though. That's the idea. Boston College, Pittsburgh. Next week, you join us, 12 noon Eastern time. Johnny Majors Club. Headed in the right direction. Boy, they can run the football. Yes, they can. A little surprised at that Ohio State score. Ryan, BC quarterback's cumulative. Ryan, four for 13, 62 yards. The stats I had as a freshman in high school at quarterback. That's why they pushed me on the line. Yeah. <laughs> Great look to Watson and under pressure. 58 Cornell Brown. He really put a pop on the quarterback Jeff Ryan. They tried that quick look in pass and nothing doing. Well Cornell Brown a, a guy who I, I believe will be an All-American. Everybody's All-American before he gets out of out of Blacksburg. He's out of Lynchburg Virginia as you mentioned his brother playing ball up at Pitt and this kid everybody wanted him in the country. He was a premier linebacker uh, played well as a freshman and has just a great future ahead of him. Third and long defense licking its chops. 12 nothing Virginia Tech. 640 to go here at Alumni Stadium. They bring the blitz. Ryan over the middle. Cannon had it. And he flags. Yes, sir. Oh boy. Larry Green riding his back. Everybody throwing another. There's another flag for extra measure. BC finally got a break, huh? Green's looking around like, hey man, what do you mean? Who me? Yes, interference. Defense. See, you can see him. He's kind of that off that offhand. He's kind of tucking on that jersey. Now, guys in the NFL, they get away with that. <laughs> you got to be real smooth about it. On this level, you had a, a official looking right at him, so he got caught for that. About the only Pass thing. interference. It's the defense. Penalty is a first down at the spot of the foul. All right, you know, Dave, that's about the only thing that's going wrong against this defense. George Joe Rio, six tackles on the evening and a half a sack. He has been everywhere. Cornell Brown and Ken Brown. This has been a great effort on the defensive end. Falls at the BC 44. Oh, what a move by Hank Coleman. He got a big lick. Hank Coleman absolutely abused Dan Ariskovich. He shoved him. He put an outside move. Whipped nice them man. out and came inside. An awesome move by Hank Coleman, number six, to get the pressure on Jeff Ryan, the intended receiver, Clarence Cannon. Hank Good. Coleman showing some big time strength and speed. That's a great call, Dave. I mean, you picked it up. Outside speed rusher with a spin, and, and this time he just really overpowers him because what happens with a risk of it is that he got off, off balance. The big guys have got to settle down, and you got to keep those feet parallel. If not, you, you're not going to be able to take on a speed rusher. Hank, a junior out of Richmond. Second and 10 from the 44. Clock at 6.32. Play clock got to zero. Penalty flag. See if they count it. Bryce pays a price from Yarborough at the 48. See what the flag is all about. Offsides. Defense. What a break for BC. Hey. Because that play clock was at one to zero. It was just flipping over. Second break. JC Price. Gets the defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Yeah, see, he's going. And they up. got him. Yeah. He got off. Balls at the 49 of BC. Jeff Ryan won for his last nine passing attempts. Down 12-0, 627 to go. We talk about Pete Mitchell. You oh, saw him on the cover of several magazines in the eastern part of the country, and he has had a slow, slow afternoon. Ryan Warren for it all. Cannon downfield. Cannon there. Overthrown. Coverage by Larry Green at the four. Yeah. 
Good coverage also there by Antonio Banks. Next week's action in the Big East, West Virginia at Virginia Tech, and Rick will be there for Virtual Radio, yeah, PM that'll, start. That'll be fun. It'll be good. I mean, it's a war. They don't like each other. You know what oh. I mean? Those guys get down in Blacksburg, and, and they just uh, got a little war going. Our game will be together next Saturday at mm -hmm. noon, BC at Pitt. Rutgers at Penn State. What a stretch Rutgers has. Syracuse tonight, Penn State next week, and we'll see them against Miami at Rutgers Stadium in two weeks. You know, but young kids, they like, they like to play... Uh, you know, the best opponent you can get. I think that's good. Going to run it with Comer. Rones here in the BC fandom. And he maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Cornell Brown was the first there, and then he got a lot of help. Other games in the Big East next week, Temple's at Army. Army was hammered last and a couple of nights ago by Duke. Down at Duke, Washington State of Miami, Syracuse in East Carolina. What's your take on Miami? Tell you what, I want to see the, if Frank Costa stays consistent and reads blitzes the way he did against Arizona State last week. Look out. No, I, I think the Canes are back, and they're back in a big way. Fourth down, five at midfield. Call it four. Watson in motion. Ryan, they run a loop over the middle. First down, Watson, and more. Hit hard at the 31-yard line. First down, Boston College. Brought down by Green and Gray, a 19-yard pickup. A glimmer of hope really is. 527 remains in this game. Here, Ryan, as you get a real nice, I like this living room view. Another crossing route. They've been effective with this. About their fourth time they've hooked up. And you get to move the chains. Just a, just a hope, a little bit of hope, man. This drive began back at the BC 31. They're at the 31 of Virginia Tech right now. David Green, the lone setback, Mitchell in motion. Ryan spreading out, buys some time into the end zone. He's got a man down there, Grice, pushed out of bounds. Ball is out of the end zone. There was some contact there by Yarborough. Grice makes the catch, but out of the end zone. Yeah, he's just late with the football. A little half sprint out. They're trying to get away from the rush. Here you see it. See, he's open. Ball's just not there. Yarbrough makes the contact, but they are out of the end zone. You know, believe it or not, when Dan Henning looks at this film, there are going to be some positives. You're going to say, if we had just done this, if we just do this, and maybe we'll get a shot at Pitt. 5 one to go in the ball game. 12-0 Virginia Tech. Mitchell stays in and block, picks up the blitz to throw to Watson, complete to the 29. Antonio Banks shuts it down quickly. I'm wondering why sometimes you didn't see Pete Mitchell in the throwing uh, out in the pass pattern. They leave him into uh, pass protect as he did on that time. It picked up the blitz by Brandon Simonis. Well, the play prior to that, he had Keith, Ken Brown and, and Cornell Brown on a stunt. And he closed the, the corner so they could sprint out. So he's been playing a good football game. And sometimes, you know, we tend to talk about him so much as a receiver to get this guy, you know, he'll stick it in there and block as well. Third date at the 29. Look out. Ryan overthrows, pressured from backside. Jimmy Barron knocked him down. They were going to Pete, too. They were going to our guy. Boy, it is tough. It's your senior year. You're coming off great numbers. You get 10 catches against Michigan. You come into this, you know, new refurbished stadium. You want to have a good showing, but they can't get you to football. You know, that is a high percentage pass in most cases. Fourth down again. Last time at fourth and five from the 50. Ryan connected with Watson for 19 yards. Tenth play of this drive. Clock at 419, Ryan. Blitz. Simonis was there. Watson is knocked down at the 32-yard line. The coverage by Antonio Banks. You don't have a chance. That's one thing you know that, that Almation's defense will do. They will force the issue. They'll force you to throw into blitz, have a break off, and come short of the yard mark. Penalty flag. And after the outstanding showing at Michigan, yes, it was a loss. That's what Coach Henning said. It was good performance, but we lost. That's mm -hmm. the bottom line. Mm -hmm. The offense has not clicked nearly as well. Matter of fact, not at all. 4-13 to go. Virginia Tech leading 12-0. Back to Alumni offense. Stadium after these It'll messages. Be First down all the way. 
long afternoon for the BC offense. The defense has been on the field for a very long time. And they've done well to hold Virginia Tech to just 12 points today. None by the offense. Two field goals mm -hmm. and an interception return by Yarbrough. Check that Torian Gray with the uh, pick six. Brian Edmonds. They need to strip them. They need to strip. They need to force a turnover. Timeout called by Boston College. So BC calls a timeout with 4.03 to go. This is a time in any football game, especially if you're at the home squad, that traffic jam time. You know, people have a pretty good feel for whether or not they <laughs> think you can get back in the game. And, well, that'll let you know. Oh, they will. They will. This crowd has been pretty good, though. I mean, they understand. They appreciate defensive football. And that's something that Dan Henning's group can build on. Next week, Boston College will see them against Pittsburgh. Then they're off on October 1st. And then the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame come in here on October 8th. Won't be any empty seats on that one. This place is sold out. You know, sold out the entire year. And, you know, Boston College does a great job with their student athletes. If you look back over the past 10 years, they uh, can sport the highest rate of graduation. Uh, they have they have done a, a just an outstanding job as a university. As we mentioned, that shutout handed to BC by Navy the year before Doug Flutie arrived on campus. Flutie looked pretty good last night. We got yes, a he did. To watch a little, little CFL action. Yes, he did. Maurice DeShazo has not lit it up. Offense has really been in a battle against his Boston College defense. Wayne Thomas hit hard. There's a good play. Good play by Tim Morbido. So the defense hanging in there for BC. 3.57 to go, and BC calls another timeout. BC's got one left, and long faces on that sideline for Boston College. That's number 15, Billy Gustin, freshman free safety, number 15. Well, it's disappointing. I mean, you have a, in college, you, you're dealing with the emotions. You go out to Michigan, then you get a bye week, then you come home against Virginia Tech, and you're in conference play, and there's all the hoopla, the celebrations of the stadium, and you feel like you let everybody down. Six six. Pitt has probably run as far as it's going to run against Ohio State. How about this one, LSU? Yeah. Well, Tell you what, we remember we were down at LSU last year. Uh -huh. Curly Hom in hot seat. Yes. And then uh, he had he wasn't lucky in terms of trying to land Booty. You know the shortstop quarterback. Superstar. Yeah. He decided to go baseball for the money. Sounds like you, you would have done as well. All for naught though this year. <laughs> Ooh. Mamula still got something left in his tank. Wayne Thomas. The clock running actually it has stopped at 3.52. Dan Henning suffers first loss in his return to the college campus. Robbie Kelly set the punt one more time for Virginia Tech. Tech's going to have some great momentum going into the West Virginia game Thursday night. Got another high kick. Boy, it's hanging, hanging, hanging. Watson's got it at the 29. Looking for the wall. Run down. That's a good play by number 53. Number 53 is Chris Peduzzi, a senior defensive end out of Johnstown High School in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Good wheels. They play good special teams. I mean, Tech is... They've really been on it, and especially when you look at the absence of 
of Ryan Williams, their place kicker, who will be out for a couple more weeks. Dislocated shoulder. Try to carry your premium last week. Yeah. Off and yeah. Watched, <laughs> hold, and tried to throw it, and wound up dislocating his shoulder. It's a tough game, especially when you're not accustomed to hit quarterbacks and kickers. Mitchell in motion. 3.42 to go, Ryan. The throw back. Got a man. And then Cannon comes up lame at the 41. He pulled his left hamstring, being covered by Larry Green as he was about to extend. It looked like that left hamstring went on him. Yeah, that was clear. Good idea with the throwback. He's being replaced by number one, Steve Everson, redshirt freshman. He's out of Valdosta, Georgia. Don't forget, join us next week at noon Eastern time. Boston College on the road again, taking on the improved Pitt Panthers. And we will be at Pitt Stadium to see Johnny Majors and his club. It's be a great matchup. You know, Majors and Pitt, they like to run the football. Boston College has given us a great showing as to how they play to run, so it should be good. Just throw the blitz, throw to Emerson, and he makes the catch. Knocked out of bounds at the 40. Dave, I'd kind of like to see him come back to that throwback. Maybe flip the formation and try it, try it again. The play was there, but uh, Cannon pulled up. Frank Beamer. You know what Frank's thinking? He wants to get on that bus, to get on that plane, and That's right. try to figure out how his quarterback's feeling. There's going to be some. Some guys limping around Virginia Tech. And you know what? One, one piece of good news for Frank Beamer. Last year in the Big East, Virginia Tech went one and three on the road while going three and zero at home. Over the middle, good coverage on the play by Ken Brown all over Pete Mitchell. Last year at this time, we saw Kenny Brown chasing Mitchell most of the afternoon. You know, as we think about uh, most valuable players, obviously. Yarborough is one that sticks out, but Kenny Brown having dual responsibility to match up with, with Pete Mitchell and also play the run. Uh, he is blitzed. He's in a number of different things uh, outstanding for Virginia Tech. Clock at 3.26. Second down and 10 for Boston College. Ryan, draw Justice Smith, finds a hole. Showing some speed. And finally dragged down two yards shy of a first down. Antonio Banks. Some good wheels to get, get over to make the play. Well, sure, he was motoring. Yes, he, he was. really was. Because you <laughs> you have to know that uh, Smith's trying to get out of bounds and boy Banks cut on the afterburners and corralled him. Clock continues to run. We're at three minutes to go here at Alumni Stadium. Blitz coming. Ryan didn't see it. Kenny Brown got a lick. Yes, he did. Kenyatta Watson, that's been the most successful play. Just that quick slant over the middle. And Any doubts about Brown? No, sir. <laughs> you better not. No, sir. Yeah. Not is, even uh, close. At time, Mitchell was open in the scene, but they uh, didn't get a chance to look his way. You know, Kim Brown continues to play like this and, and with Cornell and that defensive line. Del Rico, Rice, Del Rico Jackson, uh, Barron. Williams, they've all, I mean, it, look, Hank Coleman has had a good day. Yes, he has. Fourth down and two. The 48 for Boston College. Could be the last gas, but 2.52 to go. Ryan, draw. Smith has got the first down to the 48 of Virginia Tech. You know, when you look at BC's offensive line and to a man, they spent a long time. That's a good ad. <laughs> <laughs> you better leave people from Reebok are high fiving each other right now. You know, when you look at this offensive line, uh, they put a lot of time in the weight room. And, you know, Kendall and Landry and these guys put on 10, 15 pounds per player. They're stronger and they're always doing some great things, but today it just was not to be. Blitz, Cornell Brown. Bryce was the hot receiver, and he's down to the 39 yard line. Clock continues to run, but there is a penalty flag as Cornell Brown ran a game on, on that uh, defensive line and got in clean with it. Well, that's the design of this defense. To Illegal get a, motion, offense. You know, to get a free runner, they force you into illegal motion. They make you do things you don't want to do, and this is not good. Hopefully, this is a cramp. George already playing with a cast. You see that 
left thumb. Yeah, but he's a linebacker. He can do that. That's the difference, man. You know, linebackers, these guys, they play with all kind of stuff. He needs to stretch his hamstring out. What a great day for George Del Rico. Being saluted by the Hokie fans. Oh, the Matha Stag. Illegal motion, offense. Five yards, previous spot. Repeat first down. You know, we talk a lot about high school football, but there's some, there's some great programs that have been represented here today on both sides of the ball. Indeed. I want to thank our stat man, Eric Poseman, spotter Jim Stamos. I also want to thank Reed Oslin and Dick Kelly, the sports information staff for Boston College, and Jack Williams, Dave Smith for Virginia Tech. How about Paul? You left Paul out. Oh, you saved him for last. Okay. Mitchell in motion, another penalty flag. Ryan running for his life, screen right side to Mitchell. And nice play. Larry Green brings down the big tight end. Green looked like he. Oh, he got a knee it. in the face. His helmet was turned around, his mouthpiece is out. And he got a stain or two. Oh, it, right boy. On. Leave those tight ends to the linebackers. That's a stinger. See, you shake your hand out. It's a mismatch. Green goes a buck 65, Pete goes 240. Yeah, that shouldn't happen. I mean, that shows a lot of heart on the part of Green. Offsides, defense. Bob Harrison in the screen along with Dan Henning. And, you know, these guys are just got to be thinking to themselves, we, you can't just quit. That's the beauty about the season. You know, you got to get back and find a Offsides, way to bring it out. defense, five yards, previous spot, still first down. 12 0 Virginia Tech. We're in the final 209. BC has played most of this game without its starting quarterback, Mark Hartzell, dislocated his ring finger on his right hand. Following through and hit a defender. Here's Mitchell with a big play. Oh, he took a lick from Del Rico, who got back into the game. Ball down to the 38 yard line. Yeah, but see, this is what we were talking about. You know, where was this play? You know, very basic, tight end hook. You get him in the, in the cushion and you throw it to him. If he's not open, you hit a guy coming behind him on a square in or a go. Ryan under pressure. J.C. Price through the hands of the intended receiver, Boy, number Carr. three. That's Mitchell Carr out of Dallas, Texas. Not a lot of scoring today. Adel Larson got Tech on the board. 13-27 to go, first period. Three nothing Tech. Then Torian Gray tip ball intended for Grice. He got the tip, went 66 with it for six. And then Larson, another field goal. He was two for four in the afternoon. 140 to go in the ball game. Justice Smith slips as he tries to make the cut. Torian Gray sits on him. Clock runs. We had Courtney. You had Brown, you had Ken Brown, you had Del Rico, all three guys are crushing the, uh, into one another and they're trying to get upfield and they're still playing it aggressive. See, now on defense, Dave, you don't want to give up any points. You want the goose egg. Well, a minute 30 to go. Justice Smith tries to get outside, run down. Number 58, Cornell Brown came from the offside to get on in on that play. And he had help from Brandon Simonis. Well, they're dragging. But they continue to, to come out and, and play hard because you want that 12 zip score. That means a lot for defenders. You need know, oh, to get yeah. back. It's bragging rights. You see a guy, you're going through the hotel and say, oh, yeah, we beat the 12 zip. Especially after last year. Pete Mitchell pays for it at the 26. Kenny Brown, Brandon Simonis are there. Clock runs at 55 seconds. That'll be short of a first down ball to the 26. And Mitchell. Uh, Pick up some stats, but this is nowhere near the kind of performance we thought that he'd have early on. Third and a long three. Over the middle. Kenny Brown knocked it down. Good play by Ken Brown. Just a pretty good example of what we're talking about. There's three players on Pete Mitchell. You can't throw him the football. If there's three on Pete, I mean, it's just not that difficult. That means somebody else has man-to-man -man coverage. So you look him off and you go to the guy that you have a higher percentage of completing the pass. I mean, that's just lazy football. This will even the all-time series. This only the second game, even if it won. 
<laughs> Makes it sound when he said he it. First. Hey, leave the 35. 35, yeah. <laughs> like Oklahoma and Nebraska, huh? Final 39 seconds. Fourth down. For BC Blitz the Monis. There's a first down completion to Comer to the 12-yard line. Ryan got hammered by the blitzing Brandon Simonis. Comer got caught up trying to make a move, and then he got hit. I think he got his legs caught up under it. Boy, does that hurt. Slip on this turf. No, Dave, you were no running back. You know how it is. Oh. Your mind is thinking one oh, way, your body's going the next, and the guy sticks the helmet right under your throat. That'll get your attention. <laughs> He'll be looking for his number. <laughs> I think we will we will avoid him on future endeavors. Comer comes out now with the knee. Cannon's out with a hamstring. Injury is starting to mount up for BC. It's going to be a happy ride back to Blacksburg, Virginia. And a short turnaround with West Virginia coming up in the big Thursday game. That'll be an interesting point as you do that game on radio. The bounce back ability, if you will, of the defense, the tech team as a whole, but obviously it'll be, you got a chance that it'll be a cooler evening as opposed to this hot and muggy afternoon. Well, let's hope so, because I'm not cut out for this. <laughs> I may have to actually work out to be able to do this. So Frank Beamer, unique contract. I win six games this year. I get a new five-year contract. Well, he's halfway home. This will make Virginia Tech three and zero in the season. Well, if he doesn't win six games after this victory, then <laughs> something's wrong. <laughs> yeah. All right, our Molson Ice player of the game is Torian Gray, and he had the big play that really broke this game open. The interception returned 66 yards for the touchdown. Congratulations to Torian Gray. Well, he had an excellent game, but he better take uh, Ken Brown and Cornell Brown and George Rico out for milkshake this week because they were all involved in his success. Two seconds to go. First and ten. Jeff Ryan looking. To Justice Smith, the clock will run with at the 12 yard line. 20 seconds, approaching 20 seconds. Again, that's an experience. You know, you're going away with the receiver. That's one you don't want to catch. You want to stop that clock. And Ryan stops the play right there. Or you want the quarterback to throw it out of bounds or to a receiver close enough so that he can get out of bounds. I mean, you may not think this means a lot. A victory, obviously, out of the, the, uh, the reach of the Eagles, but to put points on the board so you can build on the positive for next week. See the tech staff calling for a timeout. What do you think? That they want to prepare for what? Maybe some kind of trick play or whatever they have seen what has been a... a High percentage play for uh, BC's but troops over and say, "Look, guys, look for a gadget play. Uh, there was one. They only had one shot at a reverse. Uh, yeah, Mitchell of sure. You just want to get your guys down. You're tired. Uh, you're looking up at the clock. It's running out, and you just want to get them focused back into maybe one or two more plays, and then they can go get that nice box lunch." <laughs> Frank Beamer <laughs> got all his first teamers in there, and they urging them on. Sit on the helmet. See, we could never do that. I've never played for a coach who would allow you to sit on your helmet. Yeah. That was a no-no. Play for guys that said you had to keep it on practice long from minute one to minute last. Yeah, I've had that, which was ridiculous. <laughs> but you've had them all. You know? <laughs> who might that coach be? The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Okay. Yeah. John <laughs> Smith. <laughs> <laughs> this is my luck. I'll be doing this game now. Ball's at the 12-yard for Virginia Tech third down and ten Ryan got a man Mitchell touchdown BC and Cordell Brown is upset he wanted to get the sack he just missed getting Jeff Ryan a 
They went to Old Reliable and they found them open. Well, finally, and for all the few folks that tried to make it out to beat the parking, you missed a good one. I mean, it shows a lot of guts for an offense. Got a chance to throw to his all-star. Pete Mitchell, you knew sooner or later, Pete would work his way open, goes up, sucks the ball in, and gets a score. He didn't draw the double coverage this time. He was covered by linebacker Brandon Simonis. And they pull this off six minutes. Puts it through. Six seconds to go. It's 12 7. Virginia Tech. Well, here's your shootout, Dave. Now, can you build this up? Onside, maybe a bomb. <laughs> well, I tell you what, they're going to have to recover it in about two seconds. Yeah. And then you got one shot. We remind you that next week, We'll be on the road again, and we go to Pittsburgh. Boston College against the Pitt Panthers, 12 noon Eastern time. We hope you can join us for that contest. Dave, are, are you buying dinner next week in Pittsburgh? I think we can hook that up. we got okay. a few, few friends in Pittsburgh. Good. Good. BC quarterbacks now 17 for 45. 180 yards, four interceptions. Right now, Virginia Tech. Well, when you build yourself on offense, and, you know, Dan Henning and all the great offensive teams that BC has had, to, it's, it's easy for fans to get down, but it takes time to get a program implemented. When you lose your starting quarterback, uh, I think knowledgeable football folk will look back and think, hey, 12-6 or so, or 12-7 at home, not bad. And Tech's a good football team. Make that 10. Virginia Tech has 10 men at the Good Hands crew. Dwayne Thomas, Antonio Freeman, Brian Still, Brandon Simonis. The deep back is Tommy Edwards. You don't want to kick it to Freeman. The most embarrassing thing can happen to you as a football player to be on the hands team. They kick it to you and you blow it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Talk about nightmares. Yeah. Not a nice walk back to the sidelines. So if we're going to get a miracle finish, BC's got to get this done in about two seconds. Pooch it in the air, out of bounds. They tried to get it to Porter. And Virginia Tech will take over. And how happy is Frank Beamer and the Virginia Tech Hokies? Got a smile on Frank. Frank said, can't believe it. Freeman is happy. He got kicking team free kick out of bounds receiving team is elected to take it at the inbound spot first down. <laughs> oh Frank, Frank that clock. let it run Frank said hey boy I'd love to be the first guy their oh, defensive man. coordinator can you imagine that I can't wait till the press conference this week Phil is thrilled well he pulled it off he took credit for it not working oh, yeah. so it's only fitting that we give him credit Virginia Tech travels north and knocks off Boston College in all. By Paul Carlson and directed by for Rick Walker. I'm Dave Sims. Once again, the final score, Virginia Tech 12, Boston College 7. The proceeding has been a Big East Football Conference Television Network production. See you next Saturday from Pittsburgh, everybody. Have a good day.